Okay, uh, welcome everybody. This is the May 2022 meeting of the Newcastle Environmental Review Board. Uh, I'm John Rosenblum, chairman of the ERB, joined tonight uh, by uh, David Horowitz. Uh, and Ted Holmes is with us as well. Uh, unfortunately, Ivan Walter couldn't make it, so it's going to be just the three of us tonight. Um, starting off, uh, I'd like to just apologize to everybody who may have been uh, somewhat inconvenienced by our need to cancel last week's, uh, last month's meeting uh, for lack of a quorum. Uh, uh, it's been a while since uh, that's actually happened, uh, but uh, again, it's unfortunate and we apologize. So uh, with that, uh, we should look at the agenda for tonight. Uh, first item is the approval of the minutes uh, for the meeting of December 20th. Um, Okay. Has everybody taken a look at that? And does anybody have any questions or comments on those meet on those minutes? My only comment is that there's a portion on page two that for some reason is highlighted in yellow. Um, if possible, we should get rid of that highlighting. But uh, other than that, I didn't have any questions or comments. Anybody else? Not no. for me. Then John, I'll... I'm just going to comment. I'll eliminate the highlight. That was a uh, uh, a clarifier that you had asked for, I recall, with respect to those minutes. That's the only reason why I highlighted it, so that it would jump out. Oh, okay, yes. The final version will not include that highlight. Yeah, this was the change. Okay. Yeah, I appreciate yep. that. Um, yeah, the record will reflect that uh, we originally looked at these uh, at these meetings at, at these minutes at our at the February meeting, uh, and because we didn't have a quorum to approve the minutes at that point, we deferred them to this meeting. Um, so. With that change having been made uh, and now having a quorum of members who were actually uh, present for the December meeting, um, I'll call for a motion to approve the minutes of the December 20th, 2021 meeting. Motion to approve. I'll second the motion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. The minutes are approved. Um, <clears throat> Next, our uh, approval, the minutes of the meeting of February 28th, 2022. Uh, again, I had no questions or comments about it. Uh, anybody else? Nope. No. Okay. okay, without question or comment, then I'll ask for a motion to approve the minutes of February 28th. Motion to approve. I second the motion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. The minutes of February 28th, 2022 are approved. Uh, first, first application on the agenda for tonight uh, is 45 North Way. Uh, Vivek, uh, pardon me if I pronounce this wrong, Agastya? Close enough, uh, Augusta actually, but uh, Augustia. I, okay. I respond to all sorts of pronunciation. Don't worry about Agastya, <laughs> okay. Uh, <laughs> Mr. I Agastya. In, I lived in France for, for uh, a couple of years and there's nothing you can do to my name that they haven't already done. <laughs> <laughs> we try. Um, 
Do you have somebody appearing with you for you on this? I'm here. Yeah, John. John G. Scarlato Jr., um, okay. the architect. Um, do you want to make the presentation? I guess I can, sure. Okay. So okay. I should, all right, so I'll share the screen. Hold on. You can see my screen, right? Yes. Start with photos. Because no, nobody's seen that site, right? Or have they? No. I mean, nobody, mm -hmm. nobody's been there, I guess, except maybe Dennis. OK. All right. So this is the back of the house. This is where the addition actually is going, on the back of the house, where the deck is, uh, which is over a patio. And then we're going to redo the retaining wall and redo the patio. Uh, this is the left side of the house. That's again the back. That's the patio around the tree. Okay, this is the front of the house. We're putting also an addition to the left of the garage where the shed is. Mm -hmm. That's the backyard. That's the view from the road looking down at it. And that's the side yard, right? And that's. So that gives you kind of an idea of the house. Alright, so this all right, so this is our full application. So So I'll go to the wetland drawing, I guess, is the first thing you really want to see, right? All right, so this is Right, so this is, I don't know if I probably make it a little bigger so you can see it. Right. Yeah, the board members, we do have full-size drawings. So, okay, um, all right. But it would help if, if we can see it on the screen as well. Right, so, so if you can see my cursor, right, this is the wetland. All right, that's the flagging of the wetland. And then this is the 100 foot buffer line. I'm sorry, what am I doing? So this is. So the entire house is within the buffer. So, so the whole house is pretty much within the buffer. Uh, and this is existing wood deck with the patio and the screen porch under the patio out here. And this is the existing one story addition. So our what so we're proposing to do is put an, a one story addition across here to make, to make the kitchen bigger and the family are bigger. And then we're proposing adding a piece to the side of the house for a first floor bedroom and bath, which is on the side of the garage, which I can go to the drawings or below for that. So that's what we're proposing to do. So let me shrink it back out a little bit because now you really need to see more of the drawing. Yeah. All right, so maybe if I, hold on, if I make this. All right, so the proposal is to basically align with the piece of the house that's here and add a cross and then add a piece on the side of the garage. So this is our, the larger kitchen family room, and then this is the link, and then this is the bedroom and a bath. Mm -hmm. And this little bump is actually a greenhouse off the, off the side of the house. And then we're gonna relocate the shed in the backyard is what the proposal is. And then we're gonna do a new deck down to grass 
So there'll be a deck and a small patio under the deck, but part of that's going to be returned back to green space in theory. Uh, do, you, do you have that portion of it in greater detail anywhere? Yes. Yeah, no, I have the plans. So uh, this is the rear of the house with the addition running across the rear and then out to the side with the new smaller deck. I think the plan has. Yeah, plan, plan view is usually more helpful. Okay, let me go to the plans. Plans are down further. I think. That's the basement, probably the first line. Here's, so here's, right. So this is, right now there's a piece of the house that's sticking out here. We're extending it across and then doing the piece on the side of the garage and then we're proposing a deck. And then they're redoing the retaining wall. That's okay. our, so that's probably the closest to plan to. Do you have a uh, an overlap of the existing footprint and the new footprint? Uh, I may hold on. Would the framing plan do it? The demo plan. Well, hold on. Not the demo would do it. No, the demo didn't. The demo just showed. Uh, hey, the first page, John, would have that. Yeah, uh, my plot plan, I think. But that did it have what? Hold on. You zoom in on the. And lays out the. Yeah. So it's that addition to the side that's that's incremental to the footprint plus the the new deck is incremental to the footprint the um the addition to the back is well the new the, the new deck's over patio space so the new deck's not as much of an issue right because we're ripping out part of the patio right that's, that's right correct so yeah. because right now if we go back to the pictures right, maybe i should go back to the pictures right that might be the easiest thing to look at because then we know what's out there Better picture. Right. So, so right now, what's out there is the addition is actually going over this patio, and then the deck is out in here, which is still patio around the tree. So, in theory, you know, the patio is pretty much over covered space. I don't have a better picture. The new deck is currently covered space. Are you maintaining the same line of the retaining wall? Right, pretty much. More or less, yeah. I think the curve is going to be slightly different. But we're not going to have the patio going up to the retaining wall. It's going to be grass. Dan, it, have you been to the site? <laughs> yes. That tree is no longer there. They got a permit to remove that last year and if you see, you know, how the tree is growing and what it was growing in, uh, you know, and you could see the buckling of the patio, I didn't require a replacement for that removal. So that was the same tree in the two pictures here. Yeah, that's, that's not there anymore. Yeah. Yeah, that tree was causing uh, flooding in our basement. We don't have to discuss that. You don't have to bring that up. We could debate that for a while, but let's not. <laughs> so again, that's the tree that's shown in the left of this photo. Yeah. All right. Huh. All right I and if you go back to the pictures that show the patio. So what are those blue stones? 
Yeah, Are it they- was blue. It was bluestone. Are they set in anything? I'm thinking they're on stone dust. I got a better. Okay. Or at least the outer ones are, I think. And what's the proposal for the, the new the surface of the new patio? The new patio would be bluestone, but only under the deck where they come out of the basement. And what would the, the, the new portion of it be? I'm thinking we're still doing bluestone, but new bluestone. Or it might be a paver in today's world. So this, so this area here that, that's shown as a raised deck, that's going to be where the addition is. is? Yes. And then the new deck will come out from there? In front of it, yes. At the same height, same elevation over the ground? Yes. Okay. Are you putting in a basement too, or just footings? No, we're putting it. We're putting a basement under the addition. You mind going back to the plans? No problem. <laughs> Okay. So, so what what's the total square foot of the addition? Or the covered area of the, the addition? The footprint? Eight hundred and nineteen is what we're saying as the Yeah, let's back on the forms. You got the forms? Yeah, eight one nine. Eight hundred and nineteen square foot is the additional impermeable area. That that was the net. The net of the uh, right, of the, the net top. addition. Okay, and and then what's the area of the deck on top of that? The deck wasn't. What was the deck? I think in our calculations, uh, John, we included the deck square footage in that eight one nine. Well, the patty, yeah, the coverage of the patty was included in that. Element. Uh, and the patio and the deck are under each other. The deck is, let me the deck, the deck is. The deck is, the deck is 12 by 12, basically the deck's 12 by 24. It's about 290. And is the entire footprint of the new deck presently patio? Yes. The entire footprint of the new deck is currently patio. And more. Uh, I'm not sure what you mean by that. Well, the current patio is more than just the the entire footprint of the uh, of the new deck. There right. is more than that, yeah. So is it is is the whole area up to the retaining wall? Is that all patio? It's all patio except for the area where the tree was. <laughs> so, so, so a little bit of the tree might be under the deck, but we're still taking out a lot more patio than we are putting in deck. So, so I'm not quite sure how to answer that question. 
part of the patio might be on part of the new deck is I think under part of the tree that might in theory be green space, but so we're taking out the patio in front of it. So, so okay. in theory. Well, let, so let me just clarify. So, so any of the area that's now that that's presently patio that is not or that's outside of the footprint of the new deck with the stairs, what's going to happen to that? There's going to be grass. Okay. So we didn't, we didn't, we didn't, we came back with less deck area than we had before and less patio than we had before because we know we're, you know, we're making the house bigger. So we definitely, we took it out of, you know, we took some of it out of that figuring we didn't need as much outside space. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. And can you scroll this down so we can take a look at the portion of the addition? That's it. So the portion of the addition that's off the end. Sure. Bless you. Bless you. Thank you. So this is the existing garage, and then we're adding a first floor bedroom with a bath and closet. And this is, you know, we did a butler's pantry, a bigger kitchen, an eating area, and a family room, which we made fatter from the... Right now, it's the kitchen... Is all broken up. It's got, it's in the middle. The den is very small. The eating area is hanging off the back of the house. Mm -hmm. So, and then there was kind of a, I, I don't, I, I'm going to say it's kind of a mudroom behind the garage that was long and narrow, which we kind of moved the family room over to and then pushed the house out to make it make sense. And then we created a mudroom off the garage in the middle of the house. So, we tried to be efficient on what we were doing to right. make the house work for the homeowner and not touch the whole house. So the, the net, the net new disturbance, did you say it's in, in the neighborhood of 900 square feet? Is that what I heard? 819. 819, so it's more in the 800 square foot, 800 part of disturbance. Okay. And I, I see these seem to be all um, architectural plans. If you, you do anything, Dennis, was there any discussion of the mitigation plan? Well, we haven't had um... Yeah, I, when I, I did lo look at the property and um, I, I know that I had uh, spoke with the owner prior to the uh, last uh, scheduled meeting in April and um, there was nothing proposed at the time, but he was just, you know, we were just having a discussion ab about the property and indications of potential areas. So I, uh, when I, you know, did my inspection for, for, for this application, um, I kind of reached the conclusions, some of which were discussed. One, uh, what was going to be added to the back of the house seemed to not represent 819 square feet of new impervious as much as what was going to the, to the side of the house. And uh, the flags were still out there. Um, I agreed with the delineation line that I saw and that there was uh, you know, opportunity within both uh, it transitions from non wetland into wetland that that there's a there, there's an area that could you know benefit that's mostly uh, Pakistandra and, and non natives that are there that I, 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 I think would be very good opportunity and uh, from my pacing it off um, is is larger in square footage than their added impervious and you know that was an area I was willing to di discuss with the applicant because that was an area that I think he had mentioned to me over the phone and I said, when I have the opportunity to inspect, we could have a better conversation uh, at that mm -hmm. time. So that's one area that I identified that I think would, would, would benefit, but, you know, just, just talking generally. 
but no, I haven't seen a, a, a plan for that, nor uh, anything uh, dealing with any uh, uh, stormwater issues because they're, I'm sure they probably don't have to do it for the building uh, permit, so they weren't thinking about it if they're under a thousand, a thousand square feet, but that's something we would have to discuss as well with respect to this. Um, if it's helpful, I, I have a couple of photographs of that Pakistandra patch, um, Dennis. Helpful the conversation, I can share that. If you wish, sure. Why not? Uh, how do right, I, so I need to stop sharing. That's fine. I'll stop sharing. And then you can share. Are you able to uh, see the, only a couple of pictures I have? So this one is. Are you, are you able to see the the, uh, the patch there? Yes. So this is, and I'll show you on the on the map in a second where it is. So this is one photograph, and then um, I have another one somewhere here. If it helps, because I identified it, um, the areas between wetland flags WTL ten. And WTL11, if you look at the one of one, those flags come out pretty clearly. Um, and, you know, basically it, it, uh, it encompasses about a 40, um, 40 length, 30 width area that, you know, kind of comes off of and even intrudes a little bit onto uh, WTL10 and 11. It's uh, about rectangular in shape. That's about the general area. I don't know if you can see my mouse here, but that's that's one of those flags, and then that's the other of the flags that you were mentioning in this picture. And yeah, I I, I measured it out to be about the similar um, size as well, and we're absolutely willing to discuss uh, um, <coughs> eliminating the the invasives and putting in natives in that in that patch. Um, well, maybe it's worth us um, stopping by uh, if we schedule a site visit sometime in the next few weeks and just get a feel for the property. Uh, and yeah, I'm going to show you one other picture. And this is the Google Maps of the area. So the area we're talking about is, is back here under these trees here. The street. I think you can even see a little bit of the, the bright green of the Pakistan there and there. Mm -hmm. so that's basically this area. Okay. And you do have a red maple there, so that, that seems consistent to me as well. So, um, I, I don't know how much of any of this other information is relevant, but I want to make a couple of other points. Um, there is uh, a, I'm having a, uh, a discussion with the town on um, uh, the chap line. Um, this is a path that the town wants to have from North yep. Creek to, to Chapel Crossing. Um, that, the, the town has two options there. One is to go through some of my, to get an easement through some of my property um, and, and, and prevent, and, and the other option is to go through the wetlands, through the state's wetlands. And their preference, of course, is to go um, through the, the the area in the back of the property. So uh, I'm, I'm cooperating with the town and, and providing them an easement there. Um, yeah, happy to discuss that in detail if, if, if needed. I, you know that would presumably help um, decrease the amount of wetland impact uh, uh, that that other project would would have. A um, couple of the things just just to kind of you know uh, indicate my sharing the values of this board here. I, I sit on the town uh, sustainability advisory board um, and, I'm, and, and our property is, is a part of the um, a pollinator pathway where we're a, um, uh, a pesticide free, free yard and, and I'm supportive of, of eliminating invasive uh, across the property. So there's, there's a sharing of, of, of uh, an alignment of, of uh, values here uh, with, with, your, with the work that you guys do. Makes life easy for everybody. Um, okay. 
Um, but again, I think, uh, you know, obviously it, it's premature to have any kind of final consideration of this tonight. So I think maybe we take advantage of the opportunity between now and the next meeting to maybe stop by the site uh, when we do uh, a site visit and get a little appreciation for the property itself um, that might inform the conversations about mitigation. And um, sounds like there's some, some interesting things that can be done. I didn't realize the, the, that this was adjacent to the Chapline site. Um, Dennis, have you been involved in those conversations? Uh, I've only had the opportunity, I think, to read what Barton and Lodici provided uh, with respect to that project. But no, I haven't been incorporated in, into those. Um, looks like an interesting project. Uh, who, that's all I'm going to say at this point. <laughs> Mr. Uh, Gastia, who, who, who at Town Hall have you been dealing with on that? Uh, the, the, the town's uh, general counsel and outside <laughs> lawyers, really mostly, but but um, uh, Jill is is the main point of, of contact in, in, in town hall, and and Bob, um, uh, forgetting his last name, the uh, sorry, Bob Cioli, Bob Cioli, right? Yeah. They're 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 front and center on that. But my my, my discussions have really been on the legal matters with the documentation with the easement because. My discussion with them have generally been, yeah, we're you know, we're supportive, and so there wasn't right. much of a discussion to be had with, with Jill and, and Bob. Okay, all right, but um, you know, it it, it, uh, it it would be silly to come up with a uh, you know with a mitigation plan for this permit that uh, that that did not at least take cognizance of what was going on uh, on that side as well, if possible. So uh, you know, maybe we can get Dennis coordinated. A little bit into that process, um, but um, Ted, David, anybody else? Any of you have any other comments or questions for tonight? No, I agree with you, John. It would be good to uh, to take a look at the property. Yep. No other comments than that. Okay. Could I could I request that we try and get something on the calendar just so that we don't let it pass? Through, you know, get past the next meeting. No, it definitely will not get well. The I can't promise that we'll finish at the next meeting, but I I can promise we'll that we'll do everything we can. Um, you know, my intention is to schedule the site visit. You know, we won't be just coming to your property, but you know, two or three other sites that have active applications. So uh, we may have to juggle the convenience and the schedule of several people. But uh, the intention is to get the get the site visit done within the next couple of weeks, certainly well before the next meeting. Got it. Um, yeah. that's, that's the most I can ask for. So, so thanks yeah. for that consideration. Right. No. And, you know, and, and Dennis will, you know, Dennis will coordinate with everybody uh, and we'll try and come up with, uh, with a date that makes sense for everybody. Okay. And we're lucky to do site visits this time of year because Usually we only do them on weekends early in the morning, uh, but since the days are so long these days, uh, as well as people working from home, uh, we can sometimes do them during the week, say six, 6.30, uh, and still have you know, an hour or two of, uh, of daylight to be able to, to, you know, to do something. Um, so I think Dennis will be in touch. Uh, to schedule something that's convenient for you, and uh, you know, we'll we'll put this over uh, for we're, further consideration. We're a, so what motive? What's motivating this this whole plan is that we're a four person household that's now suddenly a seven person household because uh, since COVID started, my parents, uh, my eight year old uh, parents, live with us, and my mother in law lives with us as well. So we're all chomping on the bit to get on the project started. <laughs> <laughs> we will make whatever needs work for you guys. We'll make it work for us. <laughs> okay. Yeah. We, we, we appreciate that. And we'll, uh, we'll do everything we can to move with alacrity. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Thank you. Right. Okay.
next uh, 16, Glenn Terrace, David and Alana Perlman. Good evening. Um, I have Teo Seguenza and Alan Pilch appearing on my behalf with my husband, David. He's aside me. Great. Thank you. Good evening. I'm Alan Pilch. I know Teo's here. Too. There's Teo as well. I see him over here. Um, I'm the engineer and landscape architect on the project. Teo's the architect on the project. And perhaps I could uh, share my screen for a moment. Sure. Hopefully it'll all work. Can you uh, see the screen? Yes. Excellent. Um, so this project <clears throat> involves the um, the removal of, well, maybe I'll show first a photograph of the back. It actually involves the removal of two decks, two existing wood decks on the back of the house and construction of an addition in this part of the house, a 534 square foot addition here, essentially over the footprint of the, um, of the, of the existing deck. And with the removal of this deck, there's a, an addition, it's really a, a screen porch, which is proposed kind of like in the, area of here and extending out into the yard, um, you know, over this existing deck and extending out about eight feet beyond it. Um, I'll go back to the site plan. So what I'm showing here is the proposed addition here. Um, the existing frame decks that you're seeing are sort of outlined in this blue here. And that's where the proposed addition is and the screen porch would be there. And there's a deck to be proposed here. And there's actually some um, basement space underneath there actually. So as I say, a majority of the proposed house addition corresponds, this house addition here corresponds to the existing deck. Um, and, a, and a new deck would actually be constructed to the north of the house addition. Glen Terrace is here on the south. <clears throat> and the screen porch is proposed over most of which is the existing deck as well, which would be removed. So the overall property is about an acre in size. Um, and the, the, I'll say the wetlands on the property were, <clears throat> excuse me, um, were delineated by Mary Janik uh, in, um, in 2021. The flags were then surveyed by um, Donald Stedge. <clears throat> and I have her map here of what she actually had uh, submitted. And actually, these are the flags that she located that Donald Stedge had, uh, had uh, located. So the wetland area, as you can see, is in the northeastern part of the property, north being up, and it covers about 7,514 square feet of the property. Um, this portion of the wetland here is regulated by the New York State DEC. This is actually a part of the local wetland not regulated by DEC. <clears throat> the wetland is ID'd as 08. Um, so some, because some of the disturbance will occur within the 100 foot buffer, and here's the 100 foot buffer running through the property, as you can see, it takes up most of the house and a very large portion of the lot. Uh, there's essentially only the garage. It's the one story garage that's outside of it. The rest of it is here. Oh, let me also note that in addition to the house addition, there is a new uh, front porch entry that is being proposed. I can show you what it looks like along the front. Right now, it's kind of austere. The, you know, there's no protection for anyone you know, who rings a doorbell and, and expecting to come in. So the idea here is to actually create a um, narrow but available front porch here that would uh, protect um, you know, people coming to the house. Um, or those who enter into the house and giving some protection from the elements. Um, so the proposed uh, action would impact about 760 square feet of the wetland buffer, uh, which is presently a mown lawn and landscape areas. As you can see in the photograph here, most of this here that we impacted like eight feet in front of here, and this area is all mown lawn behind it. Um, and what's also being proposed, um, is a mitigation plan for these impacts. And what's being proposed is 
to remove existing mown lawn here, which actually corresponds to the town regulated wetland and turn that mown lawn area into, I'll call it a more natural area consisting of, you know, trees, shrub, native trees, shrubs, and herbaceous species. Um, the ratio of mitigation plantings to impacts in the buffer is about 2.3 to one. Um, in addition, because there is, um, you know, there's a driveway which conveys runoff basically into the state wetland, and there's all the runoff from the house. There's actually a storm drain pipe, which just discharges here in the back and then migrates across the lawn and into the wetland. There was another storm drain pipe here, which goes, you know, past this stone wall and migrates into this wetland too. The idea here was to pick up some of this runoff and convey it into a new rain garden, which would actually convert a lawn area into a planted area too. And it's sufficiently high here above the wetland area that I'm very certain it would work out fine here. Um, and the idea here is to both capture and treat um, runoff, the water, treating the water quality volume, and provide peak rate attenuation. Um, and so that's really what the plan is. Um, I could just show you, um, you know, this is the elevation that was provided by um, Teo Seguenza, the architect, showing this is the, um, um, the screen porch that we constructed. And this would be the addition to the back of the house and the new deck um, uh, along the rear elevation. Mm -hmm. And with that, I'll turn it over to you. Unless, Teo, you want to add something to this? Um, the, I think you, uh, Alan, thank you. You were very precise on your presentation. If there are any, any questions uh, from the board members or uh, the public, I'll be happy to answer anything related to the architecture of the house. But I think you gave a very clear overview. Uh, I can probably share my screen and expand a little more because you probably want to see what we are doing on the inside of the house and I'll be happy to show that. Let me unshare. Yeah, thank you. Um, yeah, so that the area map, you know, for that uh, Alan was describing, the Glen Terrace, the house, the wetlands in, in this area here, and the 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 control the boundary covering, as you say, most of the house. The, um, these are the existing plans of the house and its present condition. Uh, you can see that the house is is, is modest. You know, the, uh, but the kitchen is quite small. Uh, the, the, we have a young family with uh, growing kids and in need of a little more space. So what, what we have uh, proposed in here is the um, addition of the, um, uh, uh, the expansion of the kitchen area. And uh, Alan very clearly indicated here with the green, which is the existing structure. The um, orange shows in here the proposed expansion, um, uh, the, pro the existing deck, I apologize, the existing deck in orange and the expansion of the deck will be outside of it. So here we have deck and the, this, the area shown in here uh, is the screen porch that uh, he related. On the um, upper level, <coughs> we have an uh, addition of a, of a master suite in here that uh, pr pretty much uh, develops in the area or over the kitchen. So it stacks on top of it. The um, back of the house, as uh, Alan had described, and the, uh, we have the, um, the screened in porch here, the garage, existing garage, and the proposed addition basically, the largely taking place in this area here. And um, in, in the front, as uh, you also indicated, Alan, we have the, um, the cover porch, which is more of an architectural feature and, and a, uh, to provide shelter to the, the family and, and, and the visitors. The, um, in here, I, I did a quick overlay in here on the aerial map in here where you can see the green will be the expansion of the, and the addition of the screen porch. The expansion of the house over the deck, as Alan indicated, will be the, um, uh, the red and the orange will be the new deck, the replenished deck. The, um, the, there's a few pictures here that uh, Alan uh, presented earlier. We have the front of the housing here, 
the front elevation, the new porch will be here in the front. The, um, the, another front in here. This is the side elevation where we are proposing to expand back in here with a new kitchen and the master suite. Uh, that's the rear view of the house, uh, the garage side. The, um, if you have any questions, I'll be happy to answer. Could you, could you go back to the, the view of the back of the house? Yes. <clears throat> so the new deck then would be extending out from the area where the existing deck is because the existing deck would all be part of the extension of the house? That is correct. Would it be? That is the, correct. Would the new deck be at the same height that the existing deck is? Yes, the, yes. the new deck will be at the same ele elevation of the existing deck, right. which is por portrayed in this image here, right there. So that will be at, at the elevation of the house. But what's under what's underneath the new deck? Uh, th there will be uh, a space. We're capturing that space under. It's part of the basement. It's an extension of the basement. That's what it is. So in other words, there's going to be, it's going to be the new deck is going to sit on top of a new structure. Yes. Oh, okay. I don't, I don't know that we understood that. Yeah, it will no longer be uh, the deck as it's shown here in the, um, in the house picture, you know, that's uh, it's an open deck. There will be structure on there. Yes. So in other words, you're expanding the footprint of the house, not just to the limit of the existing deck, but you're going further out than that. If you, that go, back, go, back, you go back to the plan photo that shows the different colors, Yes. That one, uh, no, the one you just had. The, one the photograph. Was. Yeah. The, pho the photograph, that one. Yeah. That one, yeah. So in other words, the extension of the footprint of the house and with a new structure is going all the way out to the orange, correct? That is correct. Yeah, otherwise I would be, you know, on a, an area like, a, like it's shown on the... Like it is now. Like it is now, which is, you know, that. Right. So we would like to clean it up and make a nice um, space in there. It would be a playroom for the children. Right. It's right now, it's kind of a very nebulous space under the deck. Well, it, 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 it is, but it, it is, but it's, it, it's new, you know, it's new... Uh, impervious space right that is correct um, we are trying to mitigate it through you know through rain garden. no no, no. I, I i understand i'm just yeah. trying to get a clear picture as to you know no, I understand. what what the, what the intention is in terms of the expansion then um you know then deal with the with promote, proposed mitigation separately um okay thank you i'll i'll, I'll pass you the baton mr pilch <laughs> I will surrender to my chair and you, please continue. Okay. okay. David, uh, Ted, questions? Yeah, so the proposed mitigation area of two point something is for both the red and the orange coverage area? That's, that's correct. You want me to show you uh, your plant I have it here, Alan? Yeah, it, the, the, the buffer impact where the, um, you know, it's 568 square feet in the, um, uh, where it extends beyond the existing deck. And, um, and the, with the proposed addition, um, you know, it's, you know, it's, it's already over deck. So basically it's to the extent, there's kind of like a blue line that, over, uh, yeah, right there. That's correct. That that is the the 568 square feet. So it does include that entire area. That's correct. 
Well, Plus it includes the front porch entry as well. Dennis? So it was the total of 760 square feet. And so the mitigation area includes just the, the new planting area in the rear. I'm sorry to ask him again, but so the mitigate, the, the area is the blue addition that replaced right. the old deck plus the deck, which is really a, a structure, but your deck is the roof of that. So it's those two rectangles. And the third piece is the screened in porch. It's those three boxes that come up to your total square footage. Well, that's correct. Be, no, there should be, not, shouldn't there be a slight, a slight uh, addition uh, for the for the front and the new front entryway and, and the front modest entryway. though it is well that, that's already has 192 square feet and it, what that 568 square feet is in the rear is everything beyond the existing deck mm -hmm. um uh, the, the existing two decks in the rear so it's the full extension of it to into the rear so you're, you're you're assuming the deck area is not part of the mitigation plan the existing deck area no it is not it's excluded from it. Just as tail, he he he, he provided um, a line going. That's, you know. That that that's what I'm asking. Is that is that the right calculation, Dennis? Yeah, it's it's is that. Very, here? Uh, that's correct, tail. Uh, down here because that's the addition. Right. Plus, plus that's five hundred sixty-eight square feet. Which is, uh, you right. know, what we are adding. Right. No, but the yellow the, is being added. No, the, the, David's question. I think I was going to ask Dennis. Yes. Should the should the space under the existing deck be counted as already disturbed and not be counted in terms of new disturbance, or should that area also be included? So, in the prior application, everything was all patio and uh, manipulated and hardscape, but this is you know, kind of over dirt, so it's not really the same situation. <laughs> that, that's why I was confused with the square footages. I, I would have thought that would have been included in the calculation. Right, I would too. I, I, I you know, when, when you look at the photograph of especially the deck on the if you're looking at the rear elevation, the deck on the right, it actually, uh, it's not really so much dirt underneath it because the deck actually extends to the ground plane, you know, the wood for it. So that's why um, when you take a look at the photograph, see it goes right to the ground plane. So that's why- No, I think we're, we're talking about the space on the left in this photograph. Okay. Which is pr presently open to the atmosphere. Exactly. Okay. And is all is just dirt, right? Uh, right, that is correct. Okay. Underneath the other portion of the deck, I'm not sure exactly what's there. I know the the question really related just to the sure the space under the the deck on the left side. Okay. Um, All right, well, maybe Dennis, we have to revisit those calculations slightly. Um, so, right, not, and just to point out too, so since the subject of mitigation, you guys just talking numeric. So Alan, do me a favor, the photo that's included on this drawing, could you just move to that? Actually, Teo, it's in the upper left. Yeah. So I, I, I was trying to, make this out relative to you know what i had observed on the site so am i possibly seeing in that photo the willow that was planted that there's uh at least in this photo two stakes that were installed to try to uh support that willow let me see if i have a photograph of that too. i can answer that i'm sorry to jump in yeah okay. the um our um tree service came to, we did some planting through our tree service and at part of that 
I guess, project, if you will, um, was a sort of follow up to check in on how the juvenile trees were doing. Um, and upon their visit of the check in of the juvenile trees, it was determined that the willow had a slight tilt to it, um, requiring the two stakes to sort of provide it as a support. It wasn't, it's not staked in. It's just, it's, it's now, if you, it's just wrap, it's, it's basically ropes. Uh, and you're happy, of course, to come check out the property and observe that. But right, it's no essentially way. ropes holding up the willow just to provide it um, some assistance in growing straight as opposed to tilted. The stakes that are in it had some netting around it for the deer. That was done by the landscaper. Um, because the deer were attacking the juvenile trees in the fall season. And so that is gone. Um, and the netting and the stakes are not there. That was a separate thing. Is that helpful? I, I believe so. So the stakes were never put in as tree stakes to, to support the tree. They were just put in to uh, try to con hold up the netting that was attempted to enclose the tree. That is correct. Okay. And so, you will notice at the front of the property, we have the same exact thing on a magnolia. So it was it was done right. for deer. Yeah, exactly. And that's fine. The reason I was bringing it up and that, okay, so that's helpful. So when I did visit the property, that particular tree had two ropes serving sort of as, as the staking and they were tied to um, adjacent trees and that's fine. But I know I'd called Alan um, because when, when, when I stepped in that area um like, i mean i literally uh I, I don't know how to describe it other than i stepped like through sod and into a void um not i'm not talking about like a spongy substrate i'm not talking about when you depress into like really soft sediment and then you know you leave a footprint it was like a void and, and, and so like when I saw the tree tied, I'm like, well, this kind of makes sense because this tree would be floating, you know? And, and so when I saw the mitigation plan for that area, my concern was, how is this going to succeed? Like, how is anything going to be stable? Because, you know, there's only so much rope and so many trees that, you know, could potentially support the planting. So I, I mean, that area, if, if, I don't even know how you mow it, frankly. I, I, I give you credit because, again, it couldn't support me just standing in spots. And I know I weigh less than a mower. So, I, I, I mean, I, I have no problem with the plan as designed. I, I, it's quite robust, but I think the location is going to be difficult to, uh, to achieve because of the existing conditions. And, you know, frankly, because it is wetlands, you know, the, the, the option or alternative to say, well, if we bring in fill, whatever, then that defeats the purpose. So um, I, you know, I, I just wanted to, you know, make other, other considerations in terms of a, maybe if we could, you know, look at that plan in another location and B um, it, it would seem advisable just, you know, from a, from a maintenance perspective, if you wanted to, no longer mow that area and just, you know, sort of, you know, I mean, I think it would obviously resemble what's around it, which is a lot of skunk cabbage and, and, and et cetera, you know, which just I think um, need very little uh, uh, facilitation and support to turn into something else. But I think to support this design, I, I would just have concern for myself standing there. I mean, the red maple, I, I, I it would, verticality would be difficult for, for a lot of the woody species. So, so that would be another sort of tweak and consideration with respect to the mitigation. I'm not sure if, if the area would succeed just based on existing conditions. The only thing I'll say is I was there in fall and it really wasn't quite like that at that time. I think, you know, you, you were there during probably the very wettest part of the post winter experience and uh, in autumn, it wasn't quite that way. And it is maintained as a lawn, which means they obviously run equipment across there. Yeah, I just want to note two things. First, that that is correct, Dennis. Um, the only reason that the tree was tied was for our own aesthetic values, not because the tree was struggling to survive. And I would note also that our landscape contractor um, comes every week and runs the mower over it as part of their routine maintenance on our property. 
Remarkable. Okay. That's why I'm thinking it was more of a, uh, it just so happened at the time you were there, it was probably one of the more wetter times of the season, if you will. And I, I do think that- right. the, and, 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 and since the- And I'm not saying that the whole the area, basketball. you know, couldn't support me, but there were just spots where I was like, I just never experienced this before with, right. you know, such a thick, you know, almost like a laid piece of sod. And it's just like, wow, this truly is floating, you know, so. Understand. Except it's not sod there. Okay. Anything else, Dennis, that um, you think is worth noting and bringing up at this point? Um, I don't know. I mean, just from the two-dimensional view, I, I mean, that, that the, the, the deck looks kind of, you know, relative. I mean, they're trying to match the sort of the same uh, footprint. So, you know, I don't see where, I mean, the deck has to be the, you know, it has to be the same size as the existing deck. Like, in other words, the ask is sort of the addition, and then we're just going to repeat the deck. It, you know, you could even see from, as it's measured from the wetland, it just, you know, it kind of gets closer to the wetland. I, you know, just seems like that could be minimized a bit. It just seems like a fair, you know, I don't know, it struck me as a fair size footprint. Uh, Since you were already going for this. Dennis, does the mitigation plan satisfy what needs to be done? It's uh, obviously it's better than lawn, uh, and it I, obviously meets the uh, meets the numerics. Um, but I well, don't does, always try to. Does it, in, in those does it, Dennis? Does it meet the numerics if we? If we adjust the calculation, I guess that's yet to be seen. So maybe I was premature at that statement. We could reconfirm it. Would you like to have the um, that existing deck on the right side of the house to be included in that which would be mitigated? Just looking at it footprint wise, it looks like it's probably at least one to one, but. That being said, we could always adjust something. I'm sorry, Alan. You, you're talking about adjusting the calculation or adjusting the location of the deck? Well, I'm wondering, first of all, if you're interested in having the, um, the area under the existing deck where it's open to the atmosphere be included in the impact. Yes, yeah, so I, I, I think that was the point. Um, that, okay. that the reason we thought that the calculation might need to be re revisited um, was to include that area that's under the existing deck. Okay. And then what we could do as well um, is uh, upon, you know, re re revisiting that calculation of that area under the existing deck is then uh, adjust if needed the um, area shown for mitigation, uh, extending it if need be to make sure that we have you know, I'll say better than a one-to-one -one ratio. Sure. And no, no, no. I would expect that that would be, you know, that that would be the result. If it shows that there's a little bit more required, you know, that you just yes. you know, could just in, in, expand the area, enhance it a little bit, then, you know, um, maybe take into account Dennis's concerns about the at least, uh, at least seasonal uh, water levels. Sure. in that area too um yeah, that's fine but i mean you know my sense is that we don't have uh, a real conceptual issue with the plan itself um you know so long as the you know dennis is happy uh with the you know the plan for mitigation uh, in terms of its being sufficient to meet the calculation the, the requirements uh and uh, you know, robust enough and uh, sensibly plan planned in a way that it, uh, the plantings have a, you know, have a good chance of flourishing. Um, sure. So, 
Um, I don't know what's what's the sense, Dennis, um, Ted, David. Uh, just maybe want to put this off till the next meeting and uh, have them come back with a uh, with a more detailed revised uh, mitigation plan that that Dennis is happy with. Or that sounds all right to me. Yeah, I would agree. Okay. May, may then, I ask, then, ask you a question, board members and Dennis? Uh, just so I understand, if uh, the proposed deck, which is here with the yellow, was just an open deck with no space under, would there be still a question with the numeric aspect? If the new <laughs> deck matched the way the old deck is? Correct. In, in terms of being open underneath with nothing but dirt? Correct. Uh, then I think we'd be in a different situation. Agreed. Okay, so the, the, I just asked a question, Alan, so that if we need to discuss with, the, with uh, our client what the chairman and the, and the members and the consultant are saying that uh, if, if there was no room under the deck, this would be approvable right now. Is, is that what I'm hearing? Uh, that, no, uh, I, I, I think that's not necessarily what you're hearing because I think that from what I heard, Dennis isn't 100% comfortable with the plan the way it is now, uh, regardless of the the volume, the numerical volume of it. Okay, so 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 you recommend that we come back the next time. So it's the, it, at that point that whether we have a space under the deck or it's an open deck is irrelevant. Correct. Well, well, well I'm sorry. Say that again. <laughs> if, the, if the, the port, space yeah. under the deck, if the space under the deck is occupied, to me that counts as additional square right. footage. If there's a deck that's open with dirt below, then it does not get included in the calculation. Right. Okay. But to the extent that there is sufficient room at the back of the property to install mitigation that meets the, uh, the formula, whether or not it has to be increased to account for that additional area under the new deck. Uh, uh, I mean, my sense is that there's plenty of room back there. Uh, and the question is only coming up with a plan that makes sense and that, that Dennis can be comfortable with. Um, do, do the consultants disagree? No, oh, that sounds fine. Okay. Alan, if you want to, you know, call to meet me out there like we have for others, um, I'm happy to do so. Yeah, I think that would be a good idea. Perhaps, uh, perhaps early next week we can meet out there. Yeah. Okay. It, 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 Mr. Chairman, just so that our clients uh, understand better, and uh, I want them to to be relaxed and, uh, you know, looking forward to an approval from you. Are there any other items that we should be paying attention to here? So we can get an approval perhaps on the next meeting once all these aspects are uh, addressed to the satisfaction of uh, Dennis. I, I think that we have raised uh, all the issues that seem to be of concern to us tonight. Um, presumably nothing new arises when you come back with the new, the new mitigation plan, but um, no, um, that is, I think that's what you've heard from us. Is uh, that these are the just, only, these are the concerns, um, John? I got I have one question. I just want to confirm that there is no ground level patio or porch at dirt level that's being thought of. Every the the only thing that's being proposed as part of this is the deck on top of the structure and the 
screened-in porch. There's that no. That is correct. Okay. So what what we show is what's intended to be built, if you allow okay. us to. Just, just just asking the question. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. And just to verify, you guys need a DEC permit for this also, correct? Yes, we know that. Okay. Working on that. May Good. I ask when your meeting convenes next? Uh, when's our next meeting, Dennis? Third Thursday and third, third Monday of June? Second? Yes. Third. We, we usually meet once a month, Ms. Perlman. Thank you. Okay. okay. Any other questions, Alan? That's fine. No, I think um, I think we both have our things we have to uh, move forward on. Which is fine. We appreciate your time. We appreciate you coming thank in. So thank speak. you, Mr. Chairman, board <laughs> members. Dennis, thank you. Good. Have a nice have a evening. evening. You too. Bye -bye. Thank you. Thank you. Next on the agenda, 80 Brevoort Road. Mr. And Mrs. Zimmerman. Hi, John, Bill Spade. I'm here representing the Zimmermans. Erica Zimmerman is on, on the line here as well, uh, but I'll do the presentation. The eminent Mr. Spade. Well, illustrious, hopefully, uh, yeah, there's no negative words that go in there. We're trying hard. Good to see you. Yeah, thank you, John. Good to see you all. Ted and David. Uh, so here, I'll share my screen. Hopefully we have a fairly straightforward thing for you to go over this evening versus the prior two you've had to go through. Um, do you see my screen? The yes. aerial photo? Yes. Okay. So the Zimmermans own this property on, on Brevort Road, the other Brevort from where we live. Uh, it's a one acre lot. Uh, the house is a uh, one story ranch uh, where the front is at grade and the rear, the basement is fairly well fully ab uh, above grade. Uh, and, and therefore, you know, the grade falls away. The back significant portion. What they call a walkout basement. Yeah, almost, right? It's, there's like two feet of grade above the basement floor. So there's a, I'll show you a photo here, but something to that effect. A um, point I was going to make, uh, the back portion of the property is fairly well wooded with a water course uh, pretty much parallel to the rear property line on, on the Zimmerman's property. So uh, that's what uh, leads us to be in front of you here. Uh, you can see in this aerial photo, there's a uh, deck that's on the rear of the home, which is at you know level with the first floors, so relatively six to seven feet above grade, wraps around a bit to the side. Uh, and our, our proposal here is we want to enlarge this deck uh, at you know level with that existing deck and add a hot tub on the on this enlarged deck. Uh, I'll show you some photos here. Here's the existing deck. Um, you see the, the, the exposed basement below. This walkway that comes underneath the deck is from a door out of the basement. Like I said, the, the grade is about two feet above the basement floor up against the, the basement wall. Uh, it falls away as it extends out. So out at this, the edge of this existing deck, it's about a seven foot height difference between the ground and, and the deck level. Uh, you see that the underneath the deck is uh, ground cover, uh, soil with some grass, 
uh, but no, no paving under there other than that walkway. Here's the view from the right side of the house uh, with the rear deck and the, uh, the side portion. And you see the, uh, the, the, the wooded area fairly well directly behind the, uh, the house. By the way, the, the house was built in 1952 and um, is, it's the same you know, house uh, as was originally built. Here is the view from underneath the deck. I show you this one so you more or less can see the, the line of the wooded area beyond the, uh, beyond the deck. Uh, and then also, you know, very well, you know, soil and marginal amount of grass underneath the existing deck. And this is in the middle of that picture, Bill, this is the walkway? The walkway out of the basement stair. Out Correct. of the basement, okay. Correct. So we are proposing to build, by the way, you know, I, did, I should have made that clear. Let me come back here. Our new deck, if you can see my cursor, uh, enlargement is going into this corner primarily, a little bit of overlap along this face of the deck uh, coming out in, in this direction to the rear. Uh, I'll show you that plan in a second. Uh, we had Mary Janig uh, do the wetland delineation. Um, you know, there, there's very little wet area in this wooded area. Uh, so we were actually somewhat surprised that, that, we, that we still had something classified as wetland beyond the water course, but it, it, uh, it's there. And so we delineated it. There is a stormwater pipe, by the way, coming from uh, the grade goes up the hill across Brevort Road and then steeply up the hill um, to um, Boy Polding, uh, I think is the correct answer. Um, so so there's, a, there's, a, there's a piped drain coming all the way from up the hill down uh, underground through the Zimmerman's property and then outlets where this head wall is, uh, is shown and then a swale over to this, uh, this water course. So there are, uh, then we discovered wetlands, classification soils and some vegetation as delineated here. So our buffer, 100 foot buffer extends over the existing deck, um, halfway across the existing house. Uh, so the, the, the entire deck and the rear yard is within the buffer. Um, here then is our, and I'll, I'll reduce the size of this so we can see it. Here's our proposed uh, deck. If you can see this uh, off the back of the house, off the back of the existing deck, uh, it's 26 feet wide. In this portion, it's uh, you know, behind the further extent of the existing deck is 15 feet wide. The portion on the right side is nine feet, 19 feet wide. There's a four foot offset there. So our, our total uh, deck area is 453 square feet. Uh, now again, uh, the uh, existing deck is over you know, fairly well, some marginal grass and soil. So no, other than that walkway, really no impervious surface. The new deck would, we would treat with gravel. And I think the idea will be to then extend the gravel into these marginal soil areas under the existing deck. So at least there's a, there's a uh, pervious ground cover underneath the, all the decks and it's not just eroding soil. Mm -hmm. um, so, uh, but even though we're therefore treating this new deck area, we'll have a permeable uh, cover on the ground, we're still proposing a full uh, wetland mitigation planting area within the edge of this uh, wooded area. Uh, so our, our proposed uh, mitigation area is 460 square feet. And up here on the left, if you can see it, we indicate a planting plan in that 460 square foot uh, mitigation area, it's low scale winterberry bush, spice bush, blueberry, uh, you know, Dennis and I have gone over this plan, so I believe he's he's um, concurring that that is a those are good plants to put into this area. It's a it's a relatively exposed area in terms of sun. Uh, to the left of this area is more taller trees, as well as to the rear 
but this front area is kind of just scrub, uh, small scale brushes, you know, brush. Mm -hmm. um, the, the owners are also uh, interested in, in improving that, uh, you know, the look of that area. So they're, they're very happy to be planting some new appropriate uh, plants there. And of course, they're all native species plants that are, you know, good in uh, these kinds of soil conditions. Um, unless I've missed a significant important element, that's, that's the sum of our presentation. Uh, any questions about what we're proposing? What's the what's that square in the middle of the new deck? Oh, thank you. A hot tub. So okay. on on top of the deck. Describe describe that. Um, how it's installed? How it's great? Yeah. So it'll be semi recessed into the uh, into the top deck. So there will actually be a sub deck underneath of that, the, the box there is the actual tub dimensions, slightly larger than that would be a sub deck uh, underneath of the, the main deck uh, and supported in, you can see that you know, in the, the plan here, that's that actual deck area or actual tub area. Uh, then if you see this dashed line, that's the, I call it the sub deck that's supporting the, that the, the hot tub will actually sit on. The, the post, these squares and circles are obviously the posts supporting the new deck on concrete piers. And uh, that network of uh, posts and piers support the sub deck as well as the, the main deck. Is the hot tub completely self-contained? Is there uh, external plumbing? It, it'll be just pipe from the house. No, ex no, no separate... Uh, you know, pool equipment or pad or anything like that. And a, a electric, obviously, for, for the, the heater inside the, uh, inside the tub. But yeah, self-contained in that regard. So Go it, ahead. I, I assume that it's being installed in a kind of a sunken way for aesthetic purposes, so that easier access and that kind of thing. Correct. Yeah, the rim of the tub will be a foot above the surrounding main deck. The bottom of the tub is there for about two and a half feet below the main deck on this sub deck. Again, uh, the outer edge of the main deck will be about eight feet above grade. So the sub deck will be about six feet, five and a half, six feet above grade. Mm -hmm. So still even possible to walk underneath of that. So is this the kind of hot tub that if for aesthetic reasons that they didn't see uh, the, the need to sink it, quote unquote, it, that it, it could just be installed just sitting on the deck? Correct. Yeah. Um, Part of the reason to, to sink it down would be to make it easier to, to get in and out of. Easier to get in and out, right. Right. Sit on the edge, swing in. And also, though, the, the idea is to put a cable railing around the perimeter of the, um, of the new deck so that as much as possible, the view, uh, you know, gets, you can see the wooded area through this new deck. Mm -hmm. Okay, so there's no, is, is there any drain in the hot tub? There is a drain, right? You, you, it's possible to drain it out, but the, they'll, they'll, their intention is to keep it full, used uh, throughout the year. There'll be a lid for it. They'll have the customary uh, uh, lid to go over the top of it that'll actually flip this right side of the hot tub is, a, is, is down to that sub deck. So two and a half feet below the um, the the uh, the main deck, so the lid of the spa will rotate and set down onto this uh, little sub, you know, the sub deck uh, to the side. Mm -hmm. And is the is the water in the spa treated at all? Um, you know, honestly, I don't think so. But uh, Erica, do you do you know the detail what the plan is? 
I know they come, they service it, you know, every month we'll, we've signed up for a plan where they will come service it every month. Um, but I think it's salt water. Salt, salt water. Yeah. Okay. I mean, because the, the obvious concern would be uh, uh, at some point, either regularly or at, at some point that you might feel like you want to change the water in the tub, there would be mm -hmm. a desire to, you know, just open the drain and um, let with whatever is in the tub out and um, onto the grass, which would then, you know, flow into the wetland. Yeah, cause, cause um, a disaster. You know, because I, I, I'm not sure, you know, Bill, you've been before us enough to know, uh, and I'm not saying that this equates to that, but, uh, you know, we have a pretty, uh, pretty strict policy allow, against allowing any kind of in-ground swimming pools in buffers, you know, for, uh, in part for that reason. Um, you know, the, 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 the concept the of water. Yeah. The, the potential for water coming, you know, being drained or intentionally or unintentionally out of the pool and finding it, you know, treat, chemically treated water finding its way into the wetland. Um, so we can, you know, if, 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 if you desire, we can add a note that this is a salt, you know, treated water. But that yeah, there's a there's a filter that goes in in the dishwasher and then it's um it's salt water and just that then you know for any drainage purpose it gets drained back into the the house uh you know the yeah, house, that, not, that not, it would get piped out instead of just dumping on the ground just dumping on the ground through the drain right there wouldn't be an issue with having that, that a condition to the permit to that effect uh, not in my, my Erica, you're, you're, no. you're okay with that? Yep. Yeah. So can I just ask out of curiosity, because I don't see it on the plan. So there, there's sewers in this part of town. It's not septic. No, our house is septic. Yeah. The septic is okay. in the front yard. So, right. So I, you, but before you, I'm just going to cautionary because just have a conversation with Tom before you make any commitments about um, potentially hooking up this drain into your wastewater system. There may not be an issue, but that might be a conversation you want to have before you commit to it. That's all. Okay. Yeah. I, I my impression is the, the idea is they're keeping it as a hot tub throughout the year. So there's no, you know, regular draining of it to as, as with a pool. Uh, but you know we can we can make sure that's clear, right? And if it you know if it needs to evolve to uh, you know I mean you could obviously uh, I think you have room for a dry well or something if you needed to bury it just so that you wouldn't have you know surface like John said surface runoff going to the well right. because we've done that for other 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 hot tubs where we're like could you just put in you know just put in a dry well so that we know if it needs to be drained. At least it has a, has a place to go, and it's not just going to be, you know, hosed down onto the lawn or something like that. So, uh, but, you know, I'm just giving you alternatives. Whatever you end okay. up deciding is preferred. That that's you know obviously what you'll go with. Yeah. Well, we can we can add that note that it will definitely not be drained onto the ground and either drained into the house system or uh, a a dry well. And, likely put the drywall right underneath the deck. John, do, do you feel that satisfies that? Um, yeah, if, if, if it would satisfy Dennis and, uh, and the town engineer, it seems like it would work for us. Okay. Um, but other questions, comments, David, Ted? None for me. No, John, you covered it for me too. Okay. And Dennis, are you um, are you happy uh, 
with uh, the mitigation the way it's being proposed? Yeah, I, uh, I, got, I got to walk uh, their proposed uh, area recently. Um, uh, a number of the shrubs, um, not preferable, although there is uh, some spice bush in there. So I would just ask, and I don't think this is an issue, uh, you'd be a little bit um, selective in, 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 in prepping that area. I, you know, I would recommend to leave the spice bush because obviously it's native and you're planting it. So, but the other, so, um, you know, at that time, uh, if you, if you need me or whoever, you know, is, is going to do the work, um, you know, just to sort of go through to be uh, just selective in terms of, you know, however you want to mark something, this needs to be removed or if you want to, just mark what what needs to stay. Um, yeah, that that would be just something to that effect. What you're proposing to plant should should work. Um, okay. I saw that uh, you know some some of the herb stuff. Uh, there's a lot of jewelweed, which I don't have issue with. Um, obviously, there's you know some, you know I'll call it like planting landscaping debris, not an issue issue to remove. The only thing I was going to recommend. Um, to, you know, we should just probably discuss maybe a, a, a seed mix that you would apply to the area. Okay. Um, you know, that's maybe not major. I mean, you know, I'm, I'm okay with the, with the plugs and the, and, and the shrubs, but you know, it's just something I would, uh, I would recommend also just to, you know, uh, not to be a pun, mix it up, I guess, you know, get, gets all levels right. in there. So, or herbs and yeah. Yeah. And, and, and Dennis, I, I, I know you mentioned before the, the idea that we're, selectively inserting the plantings and not we're not going to clear the, the, the big square or rectangle and, and then plant into uh, just exposed dirt so it's going to be keeping the existing ground cover that's there and 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 inserting the new plantings uh in that manner right which we had yeah experience. That was, i think i think it, it lends itself uh to that i mean obviously there'll be you know some of those shrubs on, you know, have gotten uh, of size. So there'll obviously be areas that, you know, will leave a bit of a void, but yeah, I think, you know, it would be accommodated by the, by almost like a spot planting, not right. You know, right. which you didn't do. Uh, you know, let's just have like three even rows staggered and, you know, it's the, the don't do that. Cause you don't want to convey that you need to whack it and start fresh. Cause right. not necessarily. Yeah. And we did that on on that project on Oak Hill Road where we inserted the plantings, the Burmans. We inserted the plantings into the yeah. fairly you know right and similar wooded setting. Right, there's no right. reason to uh, you know leave all of our fingerprints on there. Just just right. a couple. <laughs> right, right. But they but they do want to be dense enough so that you can say that this is an area that has been replanted and. Uh, you know, in order to get the credit under the formula. Yeah. Sure. I could find a quick picture if you wanted to see it of what we did at the, the Bermans where we did that kind of insertion and it was still very clear that we planted sort of in groups of three, these particular plants and it looked beautiful. That's okay. I'll, we'll, we can, we'll rely on Dennis's good judgment. Yeah. On this. Okay. So. Okay. All right. Um, so, David, Ted, any questions, reservations at this point? Uh, you think uh, after taking Dennis's comments into consideration, assuming that they are, this is something that that uh, you know we can approve at this point. I'm okay with that. David, I, I, I have no further comments, John. Yes. Okay. Then, uh, then I'll entertain a motion to approve the permit uh, with the conditions that we discussed regarding uh, the treatment of and drainage of any water from the hot tub, uh, as well as uh, the questions, comments uh, Dennis expressed with respect to uh, the the plantings, the mitigation plantings, uh, and the seeding, and uh, generally uh, getting Dennis comfortable completely with the with 
the mitigation plan. Uh, do I have a motion? Motion to approve, as Jonathan noted. And I'll second that. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, good luck. Thank have you. A good have a good evening. Enjoy it. Yes. <laughs> no more rain. <laughs> I think we dodged most of it. Yeah. No, it was, it would seem to be a much ado about nothing, but I know they got nailed in other places. They did. All right. All right. Good. Have a good night. Thanks a lot. Okay. Thanks very much for coming in. Thank Bye -bye. you. Good night. Good night. Okay. Next, uh, we have 35 Brandon Drive, uh, Mrs. Weinreb. And I think, is Jerry still here with us? I am still here. Yes. Jerry will be making the presentation on my behalf this evening. Uh, okay. <laughs> We're ready if you are, Jerry. Okay, I'm gonna share my screen to get started. Good evening, uh, members of the ERB. Uh, again, Jerry Barrett, the site planner for the project. Um, I'm working with Ruth Weinweb on her property at 35 Brandon Way. And let me just see where I, what I wanna start with here. Bear with me a minute. Okay, did that pop up? Yep. Okay, so this is the survey for the property that was done. Um, the Wine Reb home is right in this area here. This is Brandon Drive. It comes and it swings and it actually turns this way. And then Cynthia Court, which goes up to the Brandywine subdivision, it's right here. Um, it just didn't get picked up on this survey. This survey was done because we needed a topographic survey in this area here because what, well, as we get into this, you'll see that the subdivision road is here. Passerby coming down here looked directly onto the wine rep back deck. Um, so I got involved oh, about a year ago or so to work with Ruth to say, how could we mitigate that, um, their total loss of privacy when they're in their outdoor uh, living space? So um, what we did was back um, in uh, 2021 when we we, uh, we talked uh, with, with, with Dennis Corelli about the project and the project was at that time, it was really just isolated to trying to get that vegetative screening in place to provide some privacy to the homeowner's backyard uh, that they used to enjoy. And before the Brandywine subdivision went in, but I think what, what's exacerbated this is that recently there's been some linking up of open space trails and now they see much more traffic than they used to see. And that's kind of led to where we are today. So I'm just gonna blow up, it, it's hopefully this new plan that popped up on the screen. Are you guys seeing my, my new plan I'm showing? Okay. Yes. Okay, so this now, this map is a little better map. It shows Brandon Drive coming down. It shows the subject parcel right in this area. It shows this is, it's, it's labeled wrong. It's called Brendan, Brendan, Brandon Drive, but it's wrong. This is Cynthia Court up through here and it comes right in through here. So the subject property, it backs up. There's a wetland in the backyard. There's a little bit of a water course in this area and a little bit of a drainage ditch on this side of the property. When you look at the property, this is the subject property again. This is Brandon Drive. This is Cynthia Court coming up and you can see as the passerby come down, whether walking or in cars, and they get right here and boom, they look right here. So we got involved last year, say, what can we do to try to, to, uh, to, to, to preserve some of the privacy that the owners used to have back there? And um, 
you know, thinking about, you know, budget and how much is all this going to cost and what it's going to be. So, you know, we created our base map. Um, this is the wetland in the back area. This is the wetland right in the backyard. So the backyard comes across, it's lawn, lawn, lawn. And then all of a sudden it, um, it just drops down. So if you're looking from the back deck, you're looking across their lawn and then you get to the edge, there's like a shoulder here and then it drops down. And then this is the wetland down below and it's got Phragmites, you can see the frag in there. But so they have their yard space and then it goes to, uh, let's see. So that was the garden you saw in the photograph. So this is where it drops down and goes into the wetlands. We have the hundred foot buffer, which comes to time in, in this area. So when we put this plan together, what we tried to do was we tried to get up on, on Cynthia Court and look into the backyard and say, what can we do to try to mitigate this thing and try to get some privacy back in? So, you know, here's the challenge. This is the back of the house. This is their deck. Here's their driveway. And then they got this slope that comes up and this dashed line is the, is the existing slope that's going up. And then you have the shoulder of Cynthia Court right here. So you know, the problem is you're looking right over all of this. So what we came up with was we put in about 75 feet of three and a half or four foot boulder wall and we plant it with evergreens on the top of the wall. And then in theory, you know, we could then block the majority of the views coming in and preserve the owner's privacy in the backyard. So the owners considered that for a while. We got pricing on it and it wasn't going to be an inexpensive project. In fact, it was going to be an expensive project because, you know, there's like 13 trees that have to come out. And then we have to put in, you know, that we have to put in the wall. It's about 75 feet of wall. We have to bring some fill in to fill that out to make that plateau to plant it on. And we have to replace tree replacements. I think we're on the hook for, I don't know how many plantings, but we're on the hook to, you know, replace the trees that are coming out of this. And the trees that are coming out, it's nothing really major. There's only, it's like thir 13 trees, but like there's a 13 inch and a, there's a couple of 13 inch I think a maple and a beach, but other than that, it's mostly smaller stuff. So it's nothing major com coming out. So after considering it for a while, um, the owners talked about it and felt that, that did they really want to look across their driveway and see, you know, and look up and see this face of this boulder rough wall with the trees and was it going to look artificial? And with the cost of all this, they were kind of in a position, well, I'm not sure that that's gonna look very good after we spend all that money to do it. So they talked with their architect who's been working with them on, on the interior of their house and um, Ken Ak Ak Akamoto and Ken and I and Ruth, we met out there and we went over it and Ken came up with more of a, a, a concept that why don't we do something where we add another wall in this area and we can kind of make this look more finished and then we can maybe get some planting in and hide this buffer wall. So after meeting with Ken, um, and let's see, where's our, where's our current plan? Okay, so what we came up with was why not to try to come in and make this more of an inviting space and look at a more finished space rather than just looking up this slope to a boulder wall. <clears throat> and the idea would be, <clears throat> okay, so the idea was then to create this kind of parking court, if you will, to create a sense of an entry, put a six foot wall in here, five or six feet. And then we could fill a little bit in this area too. And we could have a second tier of planting in here. So we'd have the planting, the original tier. So we'd get more evergreen buffering going on. And then in terms of the plan, what we would do is then, you know, there'd be a, this wall, then the wall would come over and it would transition and it would kind of slope down to like a, like a two or three foot wall here, which would just have a, a, a like a framed entry with some stepping stones to the backyard. And then there could be, and then right now you walk out of the driveway and you walk up this kind of awkward steps to get up to the deck. And instead what we would do is we would come around and make it a little more gracious where you'd come in and then you could come up a couple of steps to a landing, come over and a couple more steps rather than go up this very steep, uncomfortable flight of steps. 
And so we would put this mid mid landing in two steps, two or three steps up here, then come over and then two or three steps up here. This is two or three steps back down to the back down to the lower patio area. And the lower patio area, it was said, you know, maybe, you know, right now this is the outdoor primary outdoor living space. But being that they do have compromised views now where, you know, people are looking right onto their private space. And even if we planted it with 12 to 14 foot trees, we're still going to have filter views for a while until it grows in. And the idea was to maybe um, put, a, put a lower patio down where they can get more privacy um, in the backyard. And then we'd have some stepping stones paths over to the garden. They actively work their garden. And then we would put a fire pit area here. This, was the, this is a flattened space, a little gravel pad that was a former shed. And we would just reclaim that space to, uh, to a fire pit area with gravel some chairs around it. And what we would do is we take that slope that's between the lawn and the, and the wetland, and we would do a mitigation planting all along this slope um, to kind of, you know, get a, a wetland buffer mitigation planting going on there and compensate for some of the, some of the temporary impacts um, that we have to do from earthwork to get everything installed. And once everything's done, we would plant it all back together. So we've calculated, we got about 2,600 square feet of, of wetland buffer disturbance, um, which is, you know, it's, it's this area in red that you see, and here's that wetland buffer line. So that's where we came up with that number. You know, we would try to, you know, we would be doing mitigation in terms of tree replacement plantings. We'd also be, you know, doing a bunch of slope plantings to try to get some mitigation and get some, some plantings between the wetland and and, and the lawn, um, there's no, the patio area can be a permeable paver. So we don't have to create imper impervious areas. So this can be a permeable, uh, a permeable patio. What did we call it? What about the motor court? Motor court's there. It's paved. It's already there. That's, That's the not, the, you're not increasing the size of that paved no. area? No, no, we're not changing that. We're not changing that. That's, that's there. We're just going to put a rumble strip in with a couple of pillars to kind of create a sense of entry with some lights type thing, but that's, that's there. So this would be a permeable paver patio. This would be pea gravel. We have a few step stepping stones. So, you know, we're really not, you know, doing much in terms of in, in impervious areas. And, you know, we'd be adding a lot of landscaping back in where there's none now. And again, the idea of this is to try to reclaim, some of the privacy or a lot of the privacy that was lost um, as a result of the installation of the subdivision road and the open space trails next door. Mm -hmm. I think there's a, there's a, there's a definite need um, on, on the, on the part of the owners, because you know where they did enjoy their privacy in the lovely neighborhood is 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 now gone, and it's going to be quite expensive for them to to fix that in terms of just getting this initial part of the project in. Um, and then you know while all that work was going on, you know try to try to en enhance the rest of the property as well, so they can once again enjoy their backyard and in in privacy. Dennis, you've been over there? Yes. What what reaction do you have? They've decided to package this as a single and complete project, but I, I guess the way it sort of came to us and the way that I would kind of evaluate it it, it, it kind of feels like two separate projects to me, but I, I see why they're tying it together. So for example, I'm, you know, and I've done this for other applicants. You could watch other ERB meetings. Fire pit will be gas or wood? Wood. Yeah. I'm not really behind the wood thing so close to the wood line. Um, you know, we've, we've been having, these discussions in our department. Uh, I, I'm okay with gas uh, for another project. I, I allowed them to have wood, but since they were going to do cooking, uh, it took on more of the shape of like an oven uh, and definitely had a chimney. I, you know, I, I, I've had this discussion with the fire inspector. 
you know, regardless of, of, of level of risk, if something, and I've said this before, if something were to happen, it's preventable, you know, and it would be, you know, so obvious in hindsight as to, you know, gee, why did you, you know, uh, uh, recommend this or allow this environmental coordinator so, you know, so, so near a wooded setting. So, so that, that was my recommendation for, for, for that area. And I didn't see how that like tied into the screening for the wall. So that's why it was starting to feel like separate projects to me. Um, I would say that formally, I mean, I agree that there's the drop off. So I would just like verification that is the limit uh, of wetlands. And then, you know, where you're looking to propose your mitigation that that is indeed, you know, encompasses all, all buffer and not, you know, also wetlands and, you know, maybe just, uh, I mean, I know that this is just, you know, a, a presentation, you don't have what the characterization of the area is and, you know, what you're looking to, you know, maybe uh, mitigate it or restore it too. Um, but, uh, the, you know, we're, we're looking at fire pits and, and, and open flame sort of a little bit more closely, uh, you know, not just me from the wetland perspective, but, you know, our whole department actually. Well, Dennis, let me just jump in there. And if it's okay with, with Ruth, what I would suggest is just change it to propane. We've got a buried propane tank right here. So this thing could easily just be teed off and it could just be a propane fired unit, uh, just a small unit. Um, they're not terribly. That active. would be. Um, if that's okay. That, that that would make me more comfortable. A more controlled flame with less uh, likelihood of embers and travel and wind blown. And yes. Jerry, what's the condition? Oops. Jerry, what's the condition of where the gravel fire pit and the New patio T and, and V. What's there now? Grass. What does it look like? Grass. This area here, it's grass. And even where the uh, what was the the shed? Um, I guess the shed's over to the right, right? Shed's over to the right. It's out of the, the picture. But so are, are we looking straight ahead at the area where the fire pit would be? Well, here's the garden, okay? Here's yep. the garden. And I think the fire, the, 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 the shed area was over in this area. Um, let's go back. So you're looking right in here. So that picture is right in here. Yeah. This seems to me it's right at the edge of where the drop off occurs. Yeah, we can go in and verify that. But this is a topo. This is a this is a topo here. So it looks like it's got about a foot. It looks like it's got, it looks like it's got about two feet of pitch across it. So you know we might have to put some boulders on the back side of it to, to hold that up. Um, so you know we may we need we we may need a boulder edge here but uh, it's it, you know it's it's only 2 feet of grade change it's here's the looks like we've got the 368 here the 366 is is, is right here but it does it does start to drop right after that and, and start yeah that was, that was the concern and the stability of that and then if it's privacy would it make more sense to move it around to the left to get it out of the Direct view. Well, I think that you know, I think the outdoor spaces have to flow together, kind of like outdoor roofs. So, you know, the, the the family kitchen space is like right in this area, and then that spills out onto the deck, the outdoor deck, and that becomes kind of a lounging and and and, and dining area. And now I think the idea is what they could do is they could augment that, and they could you know have a have a, have a lower area. So if they oh, do feel like they're in the fishbowl up on top of the deck, they can, you know, go down and sit. And I think you'd be down a little bit lower. I think it would be a little, a little harder to, I think there'd be a little more privacy there because you got a little more vegetation going on here. That, that the, the seated area, I get it's a, then going just again, farther out on the gravel side where the fire pit is. That was the one that, that, that location just concerned me in the near the, the wetland. 
if, the, if, if that could be relocated to another area, that would be preferable. It would just something to, to consider. Yeah, you know, the, you know the, I, 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 again, what we're trying to do is we're trying to get that organization going on. You know, you kind of come in, you've got this little area here, you can peel off to the garden, you can peel off. So it would be a nice thing. You could sit and, you know, have your dinner and walk a couple of steps and sit around the fire pit type thing. It's uh, It just kind of all seemed to flow together. It's all within view of each other. If we start coming over here, now all of a sudden it's kind of out of view. It's not you know, it's kind of around the corner. It's not part of the outdoor living space. So that that was kind of the idea, the the design idea when we were putting it together to kind of make all the spaces kind of relate to each other. I understood you. Thank Certainly, it's an interesting, interesting concept, and in, you know, ambitious thoughts. Um, There's a lot of work. Yeah. Yeah, but you know, I think the owners enjoy their home, and they want to kind of get it back to how they used to. No, no, no. Uh, of course, uh, of course, and you know, I've, I've been by that area, so I, you know, I. Um, I know how the the road for Cynthia Court was just kind of cut in there uh, without any landscaping on either side of it being done. Mm -hmm. um, if I may just address that issue, um, thank you for bringing it up and thank you for giving me this opportunity. Um, but that was a big disappointment um, in terms of how they built Cynthia Court. Um, we've been living in this house for over 28 years and my husband, Ben and I, and he's on the call as well, but he, um, the, we, we participated in all the board meetings, all the planning meetings that the town held for the Brandywine development. And we thought initially we would receive some type of buffer at the lower end, at the Brandon Drive level, um, as did other homes on Cynthia Court received buffers on both sides of the street. And we at final plan, we did not get any buffer. And um, so we were disappointed with that, but it really was the walking trails that made this a pedestrian destination and that really interfered with our privacy that made us then that we had to address this. Um, so we were um, we were disappointed how it all turned out and how we never did get the buffer. What, what was the explanation for not doing it? I don't know. I don't know. Um, the original plan, I don't know. In fact, until the very end, I always thought I was going to get a buffer and my neighbor thought they were going to get a buffer. And my neighbor also um, planted on the other side of Cynthia Court, planted evergreens recently as well to provide some buffer. And But he's got better property. His property doesn't slope. Mine slopes, which creates a problem because I was just going to put up a fence mm -hmm. and the fence wouldn't do me any good. But um, so it was at the very end when we didn't get any trees that we said, well, wait a second, where are our trees? And we were told, no, you're not, you know, it's not part of the plan. So I, I don't know exactly what happened um, and why they weren't included. And then I, I've been speaking to um, the town for, um, before I even contacted Jerry, just to find out what I could do, um, what the developer could do, um, and, and this is where I am. I'm the one with the, you know, paying for all this. Um, and as you <laughs> correctly pointed out, it's a, um, very expensive project. And, uh, and, but we, as Jerry said, we like our home. We love our home. We love entertaining. We're on our deck all the time. As I told De Dennis came to our house, I was on the deck eating my lunch and um, so, you know, having people say hi to me and talk, engage in a conversation isn't really how I want to spend my weekend mornings. Um, so, so that's why we're, um, you know, decided to do a project like this. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, well, I guess, you know, given the scope of this, um, 
I would think that this is another site that's probably susceptible to us taking a look at uh, on a site visit. Um, you get a better better appreciation of it and uh, you know, try and refine some of the ideas and understand uh, on the ground the thinking behind some of it. Um, Fine. What do you think, David? Ted? Okay, great. No, the, uh, I think it'd be worthwhile to take a look. I think you're right. Oh, uh, yeah. Makes sense. Okay. Um, then why don't we do that? Why don't we uh, add that to the list? Um, I guess we've got uh, two two sites so far um, and Dennis, you can try and coordinate schedules, uh, see what would be convenient for the wine revs uh, and the board members. And, you know, again, I'm not sure if you were listening earlier uh, in the meeting, but we said that we were gonna try and schedule this, this site visit certainly before the next meeting uh, so that there would be enough time uh, to, you know, make modifications or uh, tweaks and come back uh, for further consideration uh, at the at the June meeting. So, uh, does that work for you, Miss Weinreb? Yes. Um, I don't know when you're planning to visit. Uh, my husband and I will be away. Um, on vacation starting June 9th. So if you um, plan to visit before then, um, just let me know and hopefully we can, you know, work out a time. Okay. Uh, Dennis will be in touch. Okay. Um, you know, and, but I, I, I don't want to necessarily, you know, volunteer to trespass, but, you know, we, we are, uh, we would only be outside on the lawn we wouldn't have to come inside um you know would love to you know, you're more than more than welcome to be there when we're there obviously um uh, but if you didn't mind we could also come while you're gone um we would leave that up to you i can always be there to, to go over the orient the board to the plant right okay okay um good all right, so as I say, Dennis will be in touch with you, Ms. Weinreb, and, um, and Jerry. Okay, thank you. And thank we'll you very much. Up. Okay. All right, take care. Appreciate Bye. it. Thanks for coming in tonight. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Can I just ask one qualifying question since these are carryovers? Uh, I, I assume I'm going to try to coordinate with Ivan as well, who obviously would. Yes. Be in okay, sounds good. Thank you. Yes. And that'll give him a chance to get up to speed on it also so that uh, when they come back, you know, he'll be prepared to discuss and, uh, and vote if we need to. Right, understood, good. Okay. Okay. Uh, so that completes the the formal applications. Uh, there's another item on the agenda uh, regarding a proposed tree removal permit application on uh, Seven Bridges Road. Um, Dennis, do you want to tell us about that, or is somebody here on behalf of the applicant, or how's that? How's that work? Uh, yes, and yes. So uh, I'll start. I, I, I see Mr. Giuliano's name. I know he said he uh, wanted the opportunity to uh, to meet with you. Um, so this is the site, uh, 63 Seven Bridges, of a, uh, of a of a new home. There was an existing home. Uh, they received a uh, building permit to uh, to construct a, a new home. Uh, the home was outside of the 100 foot wetlands buffer, but they did apply. Uh, for a tree removal permit prior to uh, 
demolition, which which I had uh, issued, um, and that was in uh, I believe October of last year. And so now the home, which is still under you know under construction, but you know more along than it was in October of last year, I received a second uh, tree removal permit. Uh, where they were looking to uh, remove trees um, basically along three sides of the property that constituted the regulated landscape buffer. And so when I received the application, I, you know, sort of issued uh, my comments, uh, you know, what we call a pending tree removal permit. And two of the comments that I had made were with respect to the code, Chapter 121, uh, one speaking about that, you know, uh, in essence, to summarize quickly, one tree removal permit per year, uh, you could seek as many removals as you want per application, but once the permit is issued, uh, the language uh, as, as written as I interpreted it uh, is that you would need to wait another year for a, a formal, uh, you know, tree removal permit uh, to be issued following an application. And then two, this is a, a situation where the um, the applicant who um, is building the home on 637 Bridges also owns the property and is the uh, is the applicant owns the property on four uh, Winthrop, which is basically the backyard property line from 637 Bridges, and has no desire um, because uh, he owns both properties to replant consistent with the uh, regulated landscape buffer is designed uh, as as defined uh, and the design is just looking to sort of be like lawn or you know open connectivity between the two properties because 63 seven bridges is also going to have a pool uh, in the back so you know again as as the code was written I I, I wasn't uh, prepared to uh, to allow that uh, to be as part of the uh, the replanting plan. Um, so the applicant, um, I guess, sort of seeking uh, maybe another opinion and or clarification. Uh, informally, I said, fine, I'll, I'll have you speak to the Environmental Review Board, who I know some members were integral in developing the tree preservation code and, you know, maybe provides uh, either a similar or different opinion as to what my interpretation is. So that's what is before you at this moment. Okay. Good evening. My name is Frank Giuliano, I'm the landscape architect. Uh, this was quite uh, unique. In actuality, uh, the first building permit was to remove uh, an ash tree that was uh, actually split by lightning. Um, it was um, between the existing septic and the proposed pool. And that's what that original permit was for because of the, uh, the tree being hit by lightning and split. So yes, we just- And one that... Japanese maple. I should add, and one yes. Japanese maple. There were two trees on that application just to be accurate. Yes, there was, a, there was a Japanese uh, maple that actually was not cut down, but moved to uh, uh, the property at Fort Winthrop. It was a transplanted, uh, not actually cut to the ground. But um, that was really just to get that hazardous tree out of the way while the construction was going on. The property is owned by uh, Mr. Uh, Goodsight, both properties. They're going to be um, used as one property, even though they're still two separate properties. Of the uh, 29 trees, uh, let me just give you some history. The house had uh, been in terrible disrepair and the majority of the tree removal that we're planning here is in the upper right hand corner of the property, which was used for years uh, as a dump for debris, tires, abandoned lawn equipment, uh, both neighbors to the right, uh, the neighbor to the right and the uh, previous owner dumping leaves and uh, uh, logs, all that's been cleaned out. What's left is um, six invasive species, uh, mainly um, Norway maples, and um, there's a um, tree of heaven. There's uh, six dead trees in there of the 29 on the list. Six of those are four inch caliper of the 29. Of the 29, also 10 are on the adjacent property on number four Winthrop uh, 
on the other side of the property line. The, um, we're removing 29 trees. In reality, we would be replacing 38. Uh, we're looking at the landscape plan, trying to restore the understory of the um, plantings that are there. Everything there right now, you can see right through to the adjoining properties, including the uh, hemlock. Uh, there's a hemlock grove on the left side of the property line, and uh, but you could see right through it. So we want to underplant in that area. Uh, and just really just take out the six invasive species, the ten, uh, six dead trees, four trees at four inch caliber. Of the 29 trees, there's only six trees listed in uh, good condition. And those are the Norway maples, which are evasive species. So what we really want to do is clean up the rest of the site of these, uh, of these dead, dead trees and evasive species and replant. Uh, especially the understory and uh, get the uh, site back to what it was 40 years ago. And so basically what was, we understand that um, the trees are being taken out in the rear, but it's the same owner and it really doesn't uh, make sense to isolate the two properties at this point. The new house is a very small cottage. Uh, it's really being used more as a full house. Um, and a guest cottage than it is, a, a, it's not a, it's gonna be rented, it's part of the owner's use with their swimming pool. Are the tax lots being combined? No, they're not. No, because that is a separate house, a separate residence. So uh, that house at number 63 uh, will be a permanent, will be a primary residence with a swimming pool. So the property line between the two properties will remain intact. That's right. Um, and has this prob has the project changed over the course of the last, I don't know, uh, since you got your building permits? It hasn't changed from its inception. Uh, not one, not one thing. The grading has not changed. Uh, the pools in is in and in the exact location. Uh, there's been no um, change orders on the site at all. It's a very uh, clean cut site. The interesting thing about it is that the way the pool stands right now, and we're hopefully that this project will be completed within the next month, uh, the house, the pool is already in, the pool is completed. It's not filled with water, but it is a completed pool right now. Uh, right now, if you stood by the pool or by the patio, uh, you would look right into the adjacent properties on each side. On the right, that is actually an easement and it's a driveway. The neighbor's driveway is right there. So we want to screen that heavily. On the left, uh, you could see right through the woods. And uh, we're not removing any trees that are within the, uh, the view lines of this pool. All the uh, dead, dying, and evasive species are in the back rear corner that we're removing. Uh, the rest are all in pretty good shape. They've been cleaned up by an arborist, uh, but we're planting the understory so that when uh, this pool becomes uh, operational, the neighbors on both sides would not be able to look in and, and uh, my client would have the privacy. Otherwise, we'd have to wait till October uh, to do the additional landscaping and uh, it would go through a season without any privacy. Yeah, so... John, I don't know as it relates to this and my role on the board, just to, you know, I know these properties intimately. Um, I live on Winthrop Road, so I know the, personally know the person who's doing this, but I also managed the 63 Seven Bridges. When he bought that property, I sold it to him. He bought it for the, exactly what he's doing now five years later, but if I managed the property for him. He rented the property for five years until he was ready to do this. Um, and he bought the property specifically to combine and put a pool in. Um, you know, he has some personal stuff with family that it's gonna be good for his family to have it this way. And that's why he did it um, for his son and so forth. So, but I managed the property as, a, as an agent and all the tenants that were in and out of there. So I know the property intimately for, for I don't know how that relates to my role here. And I know the, all the players. Um, but you know, it to me personally, 
you know, when you buy, the whole idea was to eventually knock the house down and combine, and you have these trees, as Frank is explaining, separating what is now going to be one contiguous uh, pool and pool house. So if there's any... Well, what I was getting to with the question of whether there have been any changes to um, what, what concerns me in part, the, you know, the, the point that Dennis raised about the timing of this application, if, if these plans have been in place for a long time, why wasn't this application made back at the time that you were applying for a building permit and getting all the other plans for the house? Uh, don't put don't let really me put words in your mouth, Frank. But I don't know that he knew that he had to do that. The, uh, to answer your question, the main goal we wanted to when we were brought on the project, we want to get a comprehensive plan done. However, the architect and the uh, building permit for the pool and pool house were already in place. Then we were brought in. So the only tree that they wanted taken down was the tree that was dangerous for workers to work around and to transplant the one Japanese maple, which that's what was done just to get the project going. When I got involved with the project, that's when we said we need a comprehensive plan of not only adding new plantings, but getting rid of the invasive species, the dead trees, uh, the trees that are in poor condition. Nothing here is a specimen that we're removing. Everything is just undergrowth and uh, trees that have been neglected in those two corners over the past 40 years. So to answer your question, when we were brought on the project, that um, uh, ash tree that was removed was already removed. I had nothing to do with that. We were brought on the project as landscape architects. But it was the, but it was the same applicant. It's not the, yes. the, the, owner, the owner of the property didn't change. Yes, you're absolutely right. But the, the owner had no idea uh, what was an invasive species and what's a dangerous tree. There's locust trees in there that are uh, branches falling. It's gonna be a, a yard that's gonna be used. It hasn't been used in years. Oh. Well, he, he may not have hired you, but it does seem to me that these are things, these are issues, questions, you know, that, that might reasonably have been anticipated back at the time the, the original plans for the house were done. Um, so, um, there's and, a, num and, there's well, a number of, uh, let me just can ask. You speak, Frank, can you, can, you sure. speak to, can you speak to Dennis's point about the, um, the replanting along the property line? What's um, being what's being proposed or requested in terms of relief from the ordinance about that? Oh, the only one he's, he's, I'm assuming Dennis is referring to the rear property line, which is owned by both, which the owner but, owns both sides. Is that, doesn't, that, that doesn't necessarily matter legally if the tax lots are not being combined and if the existing property line will continue to exist because in, you know, if it's a separate tax lot and these are independently viable properties, theoretically, uh, at some point, uh, the family circumstances of your client may change. Uh, his desires as to the property may change and he may decide to sell one of the properties uh, to a new owner. Uh, in, in which case it might be an issue for the new owner, the fact that there is no screening on the property line. Um, I mean, we, yeah, which is the reason that the that the ordinance requires that kind of thing. Uh, so I'm not, you know, look, we're not, we're not here to decide whether or not to issue a permit. I think we're we're here just to talk and you know get the, some information about the situation. I mean, this is still formally. This is still before Dennis uh, on the request for the tree permit. Right. Uh, and, you know, uh, theoretically, the way we would get involved would be if Dennis were to deny you a tree permit and then you decided to, or your client decided to appeal the denial of that permit, that appeal would come to us. Um, but uh, again, this is an informal conversation, and I'm just giving you my personal, you know, reactions to to what I've heard so far. 
Dennis, can I ask you just a question, a hypothetical? What, so just for my own education a little bit here, if this permit was applied, if they hadn't applied for a permit to take down an ash tree that needed to come down, and this was the first permit that came in front of you, would it be something that would be, could, would be approved under the current, the, the, a, a tree permit that would be approved without it being a second, a, you know, double dipping here? Right, right. That that element would be removed, certainly. Uh, I still would have, and I think I had mentioned it to the owner when I called him uh, from the property when the first, when I inspected, I said, were you going to combine these lots? He says, no, I don't have that intention. And now I think he might have issues if he tried to do that, you know, based on setbacks and structures and all, all, everything else. So I said, well, and that's when I kind of, you know, started to have that discussion about, well, you know, the way the code is written, you know, uh, these, and then, you know, John helped to reiterate that just now. I said that, that to me became more the, the sticking point because obviously it's now the month of May. That's great. There's a pool in the ground. It's not filled with water. The house is still being constructed. Technically you would need a C of O before you could allow somebody to go swimming. I'm not going to comment any further on that. So my point being, you know, this may protract to the point of compressing that schedule where it's, you know, well, we kind of missed the planting opportunity. Well, we're going to have to wait till the fall, whatever. But the other issue, I, th that's the one I would have more, more of a problem with because just if somebody decided to buy multiple lots in a neighborhood and wanted to just, you know, treat it as one area, even though they're multiple lots, the, the code is not, and my interpretation was the code's not written that way. It's like you need to own the properties, you know, and have them as a single, single lot. Um, so I couldn't navigate my way out of the language of the code to just allow this. That's why I was having my own issues with this. So it's not, the issue is not the actual, the issue is not the tree perm. There's more, I mean, look, from a, layman's common sense perspective you know when people go and buy co-ops and they buy the co-op next door they combine the co-ops now you, if you look at it that way this is not i guess in that sense it's all under one owner i don't know i, I guess it gets a little technical with the property line issue what um i don't know what i'm saying but that's all right Matt, you know it, it's it's totally unclear now to me too it was clearer before the meeting started dennis are you saying that because this is the first time I'm hearing this. Are you saying that it's the real issue besides the one year by removing one tree, one tree that was dead, which you don't theoretically even need a permit for? Am I well, right? I would, I would require a permit to transplant the tree too. So let's just let's just stay with the two trees, just okay, for argument's sake. Trees. But are you so is your concern now also besides the one year wait, which is October? removal of the trees that are on each side of the property line in the rear? I don't care about the removal, but the fact that there's no replanting plan there, that it's just going to be open lawn between two separate properties. Again, the way the code is written. All right, let me, let's stop right there. Trees. Now I understand. So in other words, if I replanted, because those trees are large, uh, there's a mixture in there of arborvitaes, Japanese cedars, uh, spruce and hemlocks. It's just yep. a mix of stuff. Yep. If I, yep. if those come down and we replant shrubbery in there that meet your height requirements, that would be okay. Yeah, I think I've mentioned that to you. I just I said, give me something more than just lawn. I think I remember making that statement. Because shrubs shrubs do meet replacement requirements at eight shrubs to a tree so you can work with that to both well, yeah, because you know we've already got we're replacing a total of 38 trees right now and we're only removing 29 so uh i don't think there'd be a problem the the idea there in that buffer between the two property lines is that it's a a, a hodgepodge of stuff with all providing a whole mixture of things it has no there's there's no uh it's not 
a beautiful looking native. It's just an old hedgerow that's overgrown with uh, trees in it that aren't doing well. So if those came down and we replanted with shrubbery in there or other trees, uh, that would eliminate that issue. If, if you read the definition of the regulated landscape buffer, uh, that would that would work better than what I originally heard was, you know, just sort of the old Motel 6, you know, walk from the room to the pool type situation. Because and just, there will be an issue up. with that because there's going to be a fence along that property line anyway, a four foot uh, pool fence. So if we went in there and incorporated uh, uh, understory in there as well. Uh, that's not the issue. The There's going to be a fence. So when we talk about separation, there's going to be a fence anyway. The, the pool fence has to be on by New York State Code, the uh, yeah. property of the pool. So there will be a fence yeah. going across that property line. We could easily uh, also uh, incorporate into this landscape plan additional shrubs on, along the rear. The idea was really to remove the trees that are there because there's just a hodgepodge of different things. The uh, hemlocks in there all have woolly adelgid. There's nothing healthy in that whole back corner. So this isn't going in and just stripping out the site. You could see the amount of new shrubs and trees going in is extensive. So we right, have no problem coming location, across the back. Location, location. It was location of, of my concern as well. That's why, and that's why that back line was was you know was absent from 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 the plan and absent from my conversation uh, with the owner. So that's why you know that's part of the reason why we were here, or we requested to be here. Okay. So if we update that plan to include uh, the plantings along the back, that would eliminate that one issue. I I would like an opportunity to review that. And yes consistent yeah. with the code you know, right. as opposed to just nothing and being open. Right. So then the last issue would really, the remaining issue would be uh, the time frame of removing the trees. Right. Now, Dennis, did I hear you right when we, uh, we spoke several times that uh, we would be able to take down the dead trees and the evasive species trees um, Within, even though the year has not elapsed, there, there are there are some trees, and I would mark them that I would allow you to take down because of the concerns of their structure and or they are dead. Right. I think it's mostly the locusts, if I recall. I would have to, you know, verify that. But you know, that was my. Uh, well, I'm know, looking at your original shared, list. Your original list. There was eight dead trees. Uh, uh, um, six evasive species, including the locust and the tree of heaven. Mm -hmm. I would just, I would just try to limit it to condition, not necessarily nativity. I'll leave it at that. Okay. Because, because you technically could still, you know, you still would need a permit. You know, I, I require permits for Norway maples to come down, but I don't necessarily require replacement. But anything that, you know, could meet the definition of being an activity by right to be removed because it's dead or there's a, you know, a structural issue um, that, you know, could lead to an, uh, you know, an obvious, uh, you know, hazard. Those, the, the, those don't necessarily need a, a permit. So therefore you would by right be allowed to take those down if you wanted to remove right. those. And since you have a, a pool there and a new house, you know, I'm, I, I would be sensitive to that, but no, not, not not everything just because it's invasive or whatever it would just be based on condition. Gotcha. So basically, we're asking we would get down to the point that if a second permit can be issued before the October, so that the landscaping can go in. That's basically what it is. We would get down to that. So that is another yes. The way the code is written. <laughs> David, do you have any thoughts? Yeah, I, I, the landscape buffer and the regulated area in the back, if 
what it sounds like is the applicant, the, the landscape architect is willing to consider that and, and address Dennis's concern. Of the trees that are marked dead and with Dennis's concurrence, if those can come out on a practical basis, waiting till October because of a, a yearly permit issue, I would want to understand what the benefit would be necessarily to wait till October to address this. Is it? It would be would the, it, the, the new planting wouldn't happen until next spring instead of this spring. That's what it would mean. Uh, understood. But if the, if the concept is it would be acceptable in October to move forward with something, and it's just a matter of waiting a year to do it, I would, I would just question the practicality of that in this particular case. Um, um, assuming all the other issues about the number of shrubs and the location and the, all of that, it gets resolved to Dennis's satisfaction. Is there truly, a, is, is there any benefit to the existing neighbors to wait another year to, to do the planting? Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, again, it gets down in part to the legal question. Um, understood, that's a, you know, and that that's something, you know, I guess Dennis can have to consult with council uh, and, uh, yeah. Do either of you, I know, Ted, you say you know that property well. Dave, do you have any interest in going over there and taking a look when we do our site visit? Just for the heck I of think it? it? I think it would be interesting to understand Dennis's concern about, you know, the property line and, and how that would be affected by the planting plan, yes. Mm -hmm. And being that we have a, a walkthrough coming up in the next couple of weeks anyway. Right. I think we'd be able to cover this at the same time and kind of understand what that impact would be. Right. right. Uh, again, on the understanding that so far our involvement here is only informal. Uh, and if, you know, and basically nothing more than to advise, advise Dennis, you know, in his role as the issuer of the permit uh, at this point, since Theoretically, uh, you know, any potential appeal would come back to us. But um, okay, then then one. I, I assume you could you you could wait, uh, Frank, for another couple of weeks for a permit to be issued and still not lose the season. Absolutely, yeah, I'm sure that's fine. Okay, uh, John, someone has their hand raised who wants to comment. I think. Uh, yeah, as soon as, as soon as the, the, the internal folks finished discussing, I was getting ready to recognize Miss Alzapiety. Uh, okay. I'm not very good at recognizing hands when I'm running as the board, uh, you know, for the conservation board. So I just wanted to yep. point it out because people always have to point it out to me. Sorry. Yep. 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 <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. But yeah, so Dennis, you know, we'll include this in the site visit. And uh, you can coordinate with Frank and the property owner on on that. And uh, 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 so, at this point, are there Thank any you. questions from the public? Or uh, I do I do see one hand up, Victoria. Yes, greetings. Thank you for acknowledging me. Um, and thank you for your service to the community. I know, uh, Frank, Mr. Giuliani, my name is Victoria Alzapiti. I know these folks from our, our work with the town. Um, I'm on the conservation board. I'm also an adjacent property owner. So I live at 65 Seven Bridges. Um, and I'm here tonight, um, mostly just- Are you to, just, just to, are you next door? Yes. Okay. I'm on the north side of the yep. property. Um, so, um, I just want to, you know, I'm here in a friendly way, uh, but I am concerned about a few things. Um, I know Ted, um, he's worked with me a little bit on, you know, trying to make sure that the uh, property owners didn't use pesticides. And I spoke with the property We never owner. did. 
They never did. Yeah, they were great. So and that I was because of me. Too. That was because so, of me. I, I know. <laughs> <laughs> and the property owners are lovely people. I've talked with them about pesticides. They're great. I'm, you know, I support them, and I I know they're trying to support their son with this project. So, um, you know, I'm here with good intentions, uh, in terms of you know good neighborliness. Um, I'm also a little bit concerned on a bunch of different levels that I, you know, if it's okay for me just to bring them up here, just you know, before the tree permit is um, approved of, I always think it's good to bring things to light sooner than later. Um, when this house was, you know, when I learned um, almost incidentally, I don't even know if property owners are were informed that they were going to be building um, the new house, but I happened to learn about it, and um, I did speak with Dennis at that time because I was concerned about the trees. I'm I'm, a, I'm from Brooklyn, but I've become a total nature gardener. So every plant in my yard targets, you know, a pollinator, uh, a bird species, a lot of native plant focus, habitat gardening. So uh, the plants in the yard are extremely important. It's really my family. Um, and so, you know, what happens around our yard is very important too. So um, I was concerned about, you know, would any trees be taken down? And so I reached out to Dennis and he, he you know, showed me the tree permit that it was gonna be only these two or three trees. And I have to tell you, I was so relieved. Um, I slept better. I thought, okay, these are the only trees being removed and what a relief. Um, and so now when I got the notice that so many trees are coming down, um, I have to say I was concerned, confused. Um, had I known this at the beginning of the project, I may have raised you know, a, a concern sooner, voiced, you know, had conversations about the project, um, but because this wasn't proposed as part of this project, um, it came as a huge shock to me. Um, so I'm a little bit concerned about the process in terms of um, how that is, you know, I understand the year mark and I totally get that. Um, it does concern me that there wasn't a requirement to have full notice to all the neighbors before the project even started when a conversation could have happened um, to avoid, you know, what's happening right now. So that said, I'm trying to be as proactive as possible to understand, you know, the state of the project right now and what, what the expectations are, what's being proposed. Um, as a property owner, I was also under the impression that an adjacent property owner, that these would be two separate properties um, and that they weren't being combined. So again, I relied on that in terms of my expectation and not really, you know, taking any action or bringing in anything up with any of the authorizing entities in the town. Um, and so now that I'm hearing that there's a desire and there just are a few tree related issues that I'll mention now, the desire to take down that strip of, um, of trees, the dividing trees um, between, I guess, you know, the east and west, I guess it's to the, to the east of, of the, the new house being built. Um, that is forest, you know, that is, I, we all live in a forest and um, I take that very seriously. And um, those trees, you know, it would be nice if they were all native, they're not all native. And almost every hemlock tree in our town has woolly adelgid. So um, I hope that we're not gonna start cutting it down every tree with woolly adelgid because it, it has that. Um, and that's also a treatable illness. Um, but those are mature trees. They're, you know, 20, 30, 40 foot trees. And they're part of my view line. They're part of trees that are habitat for birds. Um, a huge amount of wild, like we had a bobcat go through our property between our property and uh, 63 just a few months ago, right before they took the house down. Um, so this is active wildlife habitat, um, you know, bird habitat. We've had more than 50 types of birds in our bird species in our backyard. Um, so there are birds that live in those tall trees. And um, I'm concerned that those will be taken down, uh, which shouldn't, you know, I take the, I'm a lawyer by, you know, don't practice anymore, but I'm a lawyer by training and our code means something and with all due respect to the property owner if they wanted to build one estate you know that's a different process that they would have gone through so to take down all those trees in that row and put shrubs in you know with all, I, I totally you know mr giuliano respect your suggestion around putting shrubs in shrubs are very different than trees they serve a very different ecological function they're not as tall any if we cut all those trees down even if a few trees are put in there they're, they're gonna take decades uh, to reach the point of maturity that the ones that are there now have reached. So um, I really hope that this board will take this request to take down all those trees very seriously. And if the request is granted to please not just allow shrubs to be put back, but put in trees 
um, and mature trees that are going to be usable immediately by the birds and wildlife. Um, and if you want me to do anything and put something in writing, I'm happy to do that. Again, my intentions are really good, but that would be devastating to lose uh, that many trees there. On my own property, um, I do have some concerns about the property line. I'm so glad that you're coming out to see. Um, when we bought our house, we were told that the hemlocks were the property line that they were on our property. So where they've marked the property is, you know, I'm concerned a little bit. I know the hemlocks are not being taken down, thank goodness. Um, they're very active habitat trees. Um, and, you know, my sense is we really should have another survey done to make sure that the, where the markation line is, is accurate. Um, so the one concern about the trees is I, I wanted to put out there and perhaps Mr. Giuliano and I could talk about this at some other point, but I wanna make sure that the hemlocks are, that the fence is on the other side of the property. In other words, that the hemlock trunks are on our property um, and that the fence is as far out away from the hemlocks as possible. Again, it's actively used habitat by a lot of wildlife and birds. There's a squirrel nest in one of those as we speak. Um, I've seen hawks there, you know, it's very active. Uh, they must be 60, 70 year old trees. Um, so I want to de definitely double check the property line before any permit is granted. And the other concern uh, on my property is there are, I guess, two uh, red maples right in the corner. Um, one of them looks like it had maybe was hit by lightning or, you know, some toppling of the, of the main, you know, leader, the central leader. Um, so it looks almost like it was topped, but it, it's, strong, solid. I had an arborist in a few days ago to check on it to confirm what I thought. Um, it's, it, it's not in any imminent risk of falling. If it did fall, it wouldn't really, you know, present a danger, but it's, it's very solid. And I'm happy to put that in writing from an arborist perspective. And then there's a tree next to it. It's a double tree, another red maple. Also right in the center, these are so far from all, you know, four houses. Um, and right now they have, um, you know, warning tape around them that was put on and that they're, they're slated here to be taken down. Um, so I really would like to salvage those to save them. I would hate to see them come down. Um, they're forest native trees. They're, you know, they don't, if you see them, you know, every tree, look, I'm living here, I've lived here since um, 2008. A lot of the mature trees here, the vast majority of mature trees in Newcastle have some health issue. None of them are you know, perfect. Um, so I really have concerns and would hope that we could figure out a way to please leave those red maples. Um, red maples are so important now in climate change. They're one of the few trees that will be okay in climate change. It's such a resilient tree, uh, so tolerant of so many conditions. So um, I really would love to talk to you, Mr. Giuliano, or how, whatever this board thinks would be a, a positive, appropriate way um, to encourage um, the neighbor, the, the owners to not take down those red maples. Um, and again, I th think one of at least one of them is right on the property line. So it may not, it may also be a property line issue um, that if they're on the property line, how does that get resolved if they want to take them down and we don't want to take them down. So that's a, just a question for all of you. Um, and the other, the Norway spruces, by the way, interestingly, there are three Norway spruces that are right there also near the red maples. And I'm not quite sure why there's a need to take those down. Again, they're not native trees, but they do provide nice um, barrier, um, you know, some habitat value in terms of being close together. And when they were put up, I remember talking with the owner at the time and saying that I thought that was actually our property too, um, but you know, that it was okay that they planted there. So again, property line question. Um, and then the other question is black locusts are listed as, um, a native invasive species. So I've studied a lot about native plants. I actually have my own um, side business actually doing native plant uh, landscape coaching. Um, and native plants are not invasive, you know, right? They're the verbiage, the semantics. So I, I would hate to see a black locust be taken down because it just is doing what its species does. And it's, you know, um, it's not, you know, technically invasive. It may be a more aggressive native plant. Um, I, I accept that as a correction. I agree that all this time, uh, you're right, it's aggressive, but it's also, and maybe this is the word I'm going to use from now on, it is on DEC's Part 575 prohibited species list, so you can't legally plant it. Um, can't buy so it I, anymore, right? I'm wrestling with that. Okay. Um, 
get to the point here? Uh, can I uh, can I get to the point? Every single yeah. thing I've said is the point. <laughs> just so you know. Um, the other thing I wanted to just check in. Let's say that again, Mr. Julian. It's almost ten thirty. You know, um, Mr. Julian, the whole meeting. The survey. The survey. If you would like a new survey, there is a certified surveyor who did the survey in stakes. If you would like to have another survey done, that's up to you. There's no right. no trees being removed. I don't know which ones you're talking about on your property line. Uh, there's no trees being the removed. The red maples and the, the, the north side of the property. The, you'll see on your prop, there's none on your property line being removed. Yeah, there are. There was a, um, let, me, let, me just, let, me, let me interject because um, for this meeting, Mr. Giuliano did give me a revised landscaping plan. And if I was looking at it correctly, there were no X's in that corner, which links up with your property, where I believe when the application originally came in, there were trees over there that were scheduled to be removed. Am I correct? And I believe the they were the red maple plan, trees. You're absolutely right. But they were, okay. but in this plan, there's nothing being removed on that north property line. So the, the revision. red maples okay. are taken the, off. The, uh, they're so not the, on the plan. Say that once again. There's none, nothing being removed on that north property. It's, it sounds like there may have been originally some intention to remove them. What it was, I, I could tell you exactly what it was. Well, it, doesn't, it doesn't matter. It, originally, there was an arborist who came in, and he put tags, uh, green uh, and yellow ribbons on trees that he recommended to be removed. Then when we got involved, we went through and, and uh, removed some tags of trees that we didn't feel were uh, needed to be removed. So the original permit, if that's what you're looking at, maybe did. But this permit never had anything removed on that side. So what I would, so what I would suggest going forward, you know, I mean, we, we will visit the property. Uh, Victoria, as a neighbor, is certainly entitled to observe what we're doing from her property. Uh, if your client, Mr. Giuliano, sees fit to allow her to come onto his property as well when we're there, then she could do that. But obviously that's up to your client, not us. Right. Um, but going forward, it, you know, it sounds like, you know, Victoria should be coordinating with Dennis uh, and through Dennis to you, to your client, uh, to see what remaining concerns she may have as a neighbor, whether some of those can be accommodated, whether some of those can't. That's, 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 that's Dennis's happy. role in part. So I, you know, I have a good relationship with them, so I'm happy to yeah, talk okay. to them. That's, that's talk part of Dennis's them. role is, as the issuer of the permit. Um, as I said, just Victoria, because you mentioned a couple of times uh, our role here, I just want to clarify again that we're here and we're listening and we're discussing this only in a purely informal way. Uh, at this point in the process, we have no jurisdiction uh, formally. We will not be issuing or denying this permit uh, if, in fact, there were a decision made to deny the permit or issue it with conditions that the applicant felt were uh, inappropriate, then the property owner could file an appeal from the denial or conditions of that permit. We would hear that appeal. Uh, but at this point, we have no formal role in the process and uh, we're just trying to be, um, uh, you know, helpful parties uh, in the discussion. Um, Thank you for clarifying that. So okay. Uh, anything else? Anybody have anything else they want to say tonight before before we close the record? Um, okay. Otherwise, we will again, uh, Frank. We will be in touch with you. We'll be in touch with the property owner, Dennis. Will to coordinate the site visit uh, and uh, mm -hmm. go from there. You're, you're muted. Frank, you're muted. Thank you so much. Okay. And I'll, uh, I'll try even before your meeting to coordinate with Dennis 
on other any other issues you might have before your meeting. Your site visit. Sure. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Victoria, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for thank you, allowing me to speak. Thank you. you too. Take care. Okay. Um, long meeting. Yeah, it's past my bedtime. <laughs> All right, so Dennis, um, yeah. uh, you want to talk to the applicants, uh, come up with a few dates that uh, that might make sense, circulate it. Uh, what's everybody's availability if we want to do it? Uh, say it, you know, say at, at one evening during the week at six o'clock or so. Usually good for me, except for Thursday. Thursdays are tough for me. Okay. I mean, that's a loaded okay. question for me. I don't, you know, you got it's hit or miss, quite frankly. I, it, it just depends. Would you rather try to do it? I mean, because again, you know, the, so, you know, we could do it on the weekend too. Is that better? To do it on a Sunday, or uh, it could be, yeah, rather than evenings, yeah, Sunday morning, yeah, usually works well. Sunday mornings would be fine if they're early for me. Yeah. Saturdays are in in the rest of this month and in early June. Or no, Saturday Saturday doesn't work for me at all through October. <laughs> 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 especially early no but in you know in, in the in the bill flank tradition i'm thinking if we do it on a, a sunday morning we could meet at like eight o'clock so sure um all right D dennis why don't you uh you know talk to the applicants come up with a with a couple of potential dates and and see what works for people okay okay well if we're targeting a Sunday, you got this weekend, the following weekend is Memorial Day weekend, so that doesn't work. That would I'm going to prepare like a, I'm just going to prepare a quick table that's going to have, you know, the days and the calendar dates. And, you know, I'm just going to probably send them to the various applicants and say, please what? return this with X is what's available. Why don't you, so, why don't, why don't, instead of, instead of pigeoning hole one time, why not just pick two times and everybody can go when they can, unless we don't have to be there together, do we? Yeah, usually we go together so we All can right. talk to each other while we're there. I don't, so, okay. So I just took a look guys. I'm, Sundays won't work for me until The, the 19th is the only Sunday that I can do it. Really? So pick it, pick it, a night during the week, then Dennis, get it, you know, pick a night during the week. Late evening, the well, early yeah. evening. I'll before it gets dark. Yeah, yeah, I'll set it know, if, we, if we meet this time of year, if we meet, if, if we meet at six o'clock, you know, we could have a good, yeah. uh, you know, hour and a half. Pick a hours. couple days at six o'clock and see what we can do yep that's yeah right okay that's, that's what i'm thinking okay all right good okay all right anything okay. else i hope not <laughs> all right good <laughs> so uh that having been said you know, i'll entertain a motion to adjourn second all in favor all right all have right. a good night Thank you. Appreciate the time. Thank you. Thanks. Good night, everybody.